Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're doing very well. I'm a bit hungover today, but I thought I would do a stream because there's been a lot of stuff about Brexit that I want to talk about. Um, I realise doing that on the last thing on a Sunday evening probably isn't the wisest thing, but I guess that uh, you'll have something to listen to Monday morning in the office. So let me just get a few things set up here, and then I'll be ready to ladies start. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing very well. I can hear my own voice. That's not good. <laughs> right. Sorry, let me get this uh, get this sorted. Hello, chat. I can see you now. Not backs world. Not backworldsman is not me on Twitter. Um, I do have like a Twitter burner account, but I don't use it. So, honestly, every time I don't, I hardly log into Twitter anymore. And every time I do, all it is is people being really awful to each other. And I sit there and Christ, I used to do that. <laughs> I used to be that bad. And it really is that bad. It's just, I don't know, everyone's just really horrible. Really horrible on Twitter. Um, so yeah, I've I've decided to avoid it. I'm actually really liking Telegram, um, which you can see on the screen there. I'll leave up, there's a link in the description. You should definitely follow me. Um, my favourite thing today was, I saw this on Facebook, I don't know how well you can see it. Um, breaking, breaking news from The Independent. I mean, look at this flashy graphic. My God, stuff's happening. Guys, guys, everyone run quick. Listen, listen. Trump misspells libel in furious outburst, outburst over Brett Kavanaugh's sexual assault allegation. Is that really? Is that... That's, that's breaking news, is it? Fucking Jesus Christ. All right, calm down. I don't think it's that exciting, to be honest. But anyway... Like I said, follow me on Telegram, because we've got to start using non-Silicon Valley um, uh, platforms. We just have to. We just have to. Um, anyway, got some really interesting stuff uh, today. Um, but first, what on earth is a UYU as a currency from Cost o Costoga? I've never, I don't know what UI UYU is. I think you've hacked it, haven't you? Some uwu thing. Um, Sub this argon. Have you watched the news that hasn't happened yet by David Firth? It's gold. I have not. I will. I will put it in a browser. Hang on a second. Let me. Uh, let me save that for later. Right. Okay. And uh, Marusha, thank you as always. Deleting Twitter now. Honestly, what do you lose? Ask yourself, what do you lose if you stop using Twitter? <laughs> I'm trying to think of... The only the only thing that I lose by not using Twitter is the ability to wind up communists and Nazis on demand. I have to, I have to go and do that somewhere else. But that's literally it. I can't think of anything I've lost by going off of Twitter. But um, anyway, let's let's get into what's been happening. So, you may remember, um, I think the last live stream video I'd, on this I did was uh, a few days ago, on the 10th now, the, oh, five days ago now, Christ, doesn't time fly, um, the, the proroguing of Parliament. Parliament is now out of session, they've all been silenced, these MPs don't ever get to speak to anyone anywhere at all, ever, they've got no social media presence, they never get interviewed by the media themselves, it's, it's over for these MPs. Boris Johnson has silenced them which is which which is why people are claiming and Boris Johnson has had to say I'm not leading an authoritarian regime I mean duh I don't know why that has to be said like Boris Johnson is doing nothing unconstitutional absolutely nothing so why he hasn't censored anyone he hasn't silenced anyone he has done he has not gone out of the bounds of normalcy by proroguing Parliament. Happens every year, or should do. The unusual thing was the length of time that the parliamentary session had sat. This is all normal. The weird thing is the... Well, the, well in fact, I'll get to that, in fact. Sorry. I'll get to the weird thing. But, um, and again, from the from September the 10th, most, most people polling a few days ago, and I'm sure this still holds now, just want Brexit to be over. We, we just, we want the referendum respected, we want to leave, just go, for crying out loud, this is just, 
it's so insufferable at this point. I there are so many other things I want the public dialogue to be about than how much the remainers are sore losers to the point where they are actually going to conspire with the European Union to undermine the result of the referendum and invite Guy Verhofstadt, sorry, Guy Verhofstadt, to their conference, which was this weekend. Uh, so this this was recorded yesterday, and this is his speech. So I thought we'd go through it, because there are some interesting things that he says in this. Uh, it's 12 minutes long, so we might not go through the whole thing, but I thought it'd be worth going through a few. Um, and before that, uh, pass around the street. I've been listening to Dr. Ed Dr. Edward Dutton recently. I'd be interested in hearing conversation between you and him. You'd probably find it quite red-pilling. Uh, Callum, if you're listening, please do whatever is necessary to get that arranged. Um, I, I don't know who he is, but you know, look into him, see if he's got any interesting things to say, and see if we can interview him, I guess. Um, and also, thank you for everyone who backs me on Subscribestar. That means I can have an assistance <laughs> to, like, in doing all of this, so I don't have to do it all myself. Anyway, go on, take it away, Mr. Verhofstadt. Gee, Gee we couldn't not let you have one of these. We, we look forward to seeing you wearing it around the Parliament. Um, I've skipped this ahead about a minute because they play some music that will probably get the stream taken off air or something. And... Um, and it, you know, nothing happened. But there was a lot of applause for Guy Verhofstadt. They, they are very big fans of him, the Liberal Democrats. And I, I do hope that he'll be wearing that bollocks to Brexit shirt. Yeah. He doesn't actually look that impressed, does he? <laughs> he looks like this is kind of cringe. And there's no fucking way he'll be caught dead in that t-shirt. Let's uh, prove me wrong, Guy. Prove me wrong. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, is it not possible to be candidate in Britain, uh, Yo? Is that not possible? Uh, it seems to me that I, I could have better results here than in Belgium. Uh, the, uh, uh... <laughs> he's, he's made his home country hate him so much that he's got to come to other countries. <laughs> I, I think so. Uh, so uh, uh, but uh, first of all, thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it, for me... Uh, an emotional moment to come to Lib Dem. Uh, one of my last conferences I remember was a conference long, long, long time ago. I was Prime Minister of Belgium, uh, still with Charles Kennedy. So that's uh, a, long, a long, long time ago. Fantastic man and a fantastic friend. Uh, and, and, and the last uh, uh, start uh, of the campaign was with the European election in Camden Court in, 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 in London uh, with, uh, with uh, Vince. But I Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting sick of him already, but someone in the chat posted, it's like walking in on your parents. It's total cringe. Yeah, dude, I totally agree. Like, this is how I feel about this, watching this. I want to assure you here, and all the journalists who are here, I'm not speaking this, e this evening as the Brexit coordinator of the European Parliament. I'm speaking here as a... No, but you are, though, Guy. And apparently their, their conference got copyright struck last night. <laughs> but you are that thing, Guy. So... You, you have come here as an emissary of a foreign power to speak to a party who are actively trying to undermine a democratic vote. The largest democratic vote in the history of the country. Ballsy, I'll give you that. Um, really annoying, and I'm telling you this now, a vote for UKIP is going to be a vote to push the Liberal Democrats into the fucking sea. Uh, Lip Dem was in favour of the European Union and thinks that the European project is the best one we have. <laughs> Sorry, I could not believe <laughs> Nevertheless, I love the fact that they've destroyed our fishing industries, even though we're a fucking island. Also, the French get to fish in our waters, but anyway, never mind. Nevertheless, I have to tell you, I have to tell you one thing, you are very courageous to invite me. That, that's true. <laughs> that's actually really true. This, it's incredibly ballsy. To, to bring the, the chief opponent of the, the national project that is Brexit to speak at your conference? It genuinely is. It's wild. Because uh, 
the hard Brexiteers and the, and the press around the hard Hello, guy. Brexiteers are always saying, yeah, this Verhofstadt there uh, from, from Belgium, this old uh, prime minister, he, 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 he's against Britain. Yes. <laughs> That's really how it looks. The, the meme of um, the kid wearing the EU flag shirt saying, I don't know where these stars come from, but I get one every time I kill a nation. I think the devil does it. Yeah, it, it makes it look like you're against Britain. And the actively punitive things. Like, people people get things like uh, the financial transaction tax uh, that was proposed back when it was Sarkozy. And this was proposed as a, as a way of specifically making the English the big losers here, as Sarkozy said it, something along those lines. Um, because 87%, or there, roughly thereabouts, of financial transactions in Europe happen in London. You know, it's it, it's little things like that. It's the fact that, you know, we've, we've been restricted from fishing our waters, they actively target us with punitive uh, legislation, things like this. But yeah, it, it really does look, and, and the fact that obviously... They're trying to erase the sovereignty of the country makes it look like they're against Britain. Yeah, I have to be honest. It, it makes it look like they're trying to turn the nations of Europe into a tax farm for the, the this emergent bureaucratic middle class, the the single degree holding English uh, English literature types who uh, who are happy to work in giant corporate offices or government offices and holiday in the south of France once a year. That that is that kind of person who has decided who has taken over Europe basically through the EU, and that's what the Liberal Democrats represent. And Jo Swinson, with her, and I, this is the best description of Jo Swinson I've ever heard. Her bulbous face. Um, <laughs> that's the kind of person that she is. She 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 strikes me as a really annoying younger sister, frankly. But anyway, what is complete nonsense. If there is one European politician who likes and will love Britain, I am. Be I am because, because I can give you proof of that, I'm uh, racing in uh, a British racing green, right hand drive, Aston Martin of the 50s, how much Britain you can be. That sounds like a stereotype, and it also sounds like cultural appropriation guy. And... Uh, And my dog is also British. Well, checkmate Brexit is. Uh, I have to tell you, I have to avoid, he has a French name. Uh, so he has Marcel, but for the rest, he's a Cairn Terrier. He's a fantastic dog. Not directly coming from here, but nevertheless, he has his origins here uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Britain. Well, I'm persuaded by those rock-solid credentials that he's a complete Anglophile in, in many, many different ways. And so... Uh, he loves Britain so much he'd like to conquer it. I'm very pleased to, to, <laughs> uh, to be here and to say a few words about, uh, about Brexit. Yeah, as, um, as uh, up yours in the chat says, national, identif national identity is defined by dogs and cars. That's right. I mean, I don't even know if you can buy Aston Martins anymore, but you're not British unless you have one. The question is very simple. We all know Brexit is not working. <laughs> Do we know that guy? We'll ask Angela Merkel her opinion on that uh, shortly after this. And be not working. And why? Because of obstructionism from salty Remainers who can't accept that they fucking lost. It is not working. Well, simply because it's a bad idea. No, it's a, it's a brilliant idea for people who don't support a tyrannical, unaccountable, bureaucratic superstate. But if you're a key component of that superstate, which you are, Mr. Verhofstadt, then of course you would see it as a bad idea. It's going against your interests. That is the reason I did it. It's a bad idea. I will not say the worst uh, idea in British history, but uh, okay, in the, uh, very near. <laughs> and we all know. Yeah, I mean, we did make the mistake of joining the European Union, didn't we, guy? I know how it was organized in the beginning, <laughs> and Tim knows it, Tim Farrell knows it, 
Uh-huh. Uh, he was leader. Well, that homophobe, weird that you'd shout him out. At that time, David Cameron said, I want to... Well, the pig fucker, hmm. shame you'd call him out too. ...and the split in my party, in the Conservative Party. <laughs> and I have a bright idea to do that. He had to do it because people wanted it. There was mounting pressure. UKIP were at 14% in the polls, rising. As in, this was an idea whose time had come. The British people had had enough of Europe and wanted to say that they would like to leave. And they did, three years ago. I will organise the referendum to end this division of opinions inside the Conservative Party. Well, I guess mission accomplished. But I tell you what, man. I wish that I hadn't a prior um, a great, a commitment on the weekend uh, because I would have loved to have gone down to the Liberal Democrats uh, conference and just sat outside with, with a change my mind fucking stall and just, oh, I could have had anything on there. <laughs> it would have been great. I have to tell you, I think he will succeed. <laughs> As Mr. Johnson is pushing out all Remainers and all moderate Conservatives, he will create a united party. I'm pretty sure about it. Well, that's good. He's done better than you creating a united Europe, hasn't he? Your united Europe is falling apart, buddy boy. I don't know whether you'd noticed. But honestly, like the Conservatives who have left, like people like Anna Subri, in what way are they actual Conservatives? Like, wh- how could you really define Anna Subri as a Conservative? She belongs in the Liberal Democrats. But it's really not the same party. I think even that uh, Margaret Thatcher could be expelled from the from the from uh, from the Conservative Party now because oh, this had better be good because Margaret Thatcher was scathing on Europe, absolutely scathing. There, I I recently um I recently decided to like a few um pro Margaret Thatcher pages, and. Some of her critiques of the European Union are just damning. One of my favorites is just, they're a weak lot in Europe, you know. And it's like, yes, you're absolutely right. But to be honest with you, they're a weak lot in bloody Remainers over here. We'll get to that as well. I've got loads here, actually. Sorry, we'll get to all of this. I can say that because my nickname when I was a young politician in in Belgium was Baby Thatcher. So uh, I can talk about her. Uh, when I was Minister of Budget, you know, uh, uh, tough times at that moment. Well, Margaret Thatcher was in favour of the single market. Mm. And it's exactly that point that the Conservatives want to leave now. Oh, no. The single market. But Margaret Thatcher was also very much uh, pro-Britain, pro-sovereignty, and she was against the further consolidation of Europe into a superstate. So, fuck off, guy. You fucking liar. And it's weird that you'd invoke Margaret Thatcher to the Lib Dems. They view themselves as a centre-left party, and in many ways they genuinely have been corrupted by Labour's socialism. So it is... I can't, it's hard to believe that they're pro-Margaret Thatcher. She said, what a fantastic project. Non-bureaucratic project. With a tunnel under the channel. The possibility to have... Someone in the chat, baby catcher. Yeah, it did sound like that, didn't it? <laughs> have hundreds of millions of consumers and citizens for British goods and British... His nickname was Fit Schnerek, which means bike rack. <laughs> ...services. Well, it is exactly that what hard Brexiteers want to destroy now. Against the interest of Britain. No, nah, it's not really against the interest of Britain, is it? And the European Union. Yeah, it's against the interest of the European Union. There we go. That's what it is. That's what this is all about. And I'll I'll show you how I know this in a minute. And we all know that this is driven by a number of hard Brexiteers inside the Conservative Party, outside the Conservative Party. Tim Farron spoke about uh, Nigel Farage saying, yeah, we have shown that he is not only representing Britain, I can tell you, Tim, uh, Nigel Farage is only representing himself and his offshore tax scheme. That is what he's representing. And you're only representing your gold-plated pensions and massive salaries that come at the expense of taxpayers all across the continent. We can all play this game, guy. 
We can all say, well, everyone's got interests, and that, that's that's all that's all we're doing. Like, believe it or not, right? I believe that you have a firm conviction that you think that the United States of Europe is a good idea. Right? When you complain about hard Brexit is, all you're saying is there are people with firm convictions that do not align with mine. That's what you're complaining about. It's <laughs> and then it's you you call them the hard Brexiteers for a reason. Right? There is that's how you're defining them. They're defined by their convictions. And you go, oh well, they've got they've got money. Well, you've got money too. Everyone's got money. Everyone's got interests. I mean like make an argument, man. Make an argument. Saying this person is interested in keeping their money. I mean, A, I can say that and have said that about you, but I do still believe you have firm convictions. But it's it's asinine and it's just an ad hominem. It's not an actual argument. Tell me why it would be a good idea to stay in Europe. Not more than that. That's right. He's a, he's only been doing this for what twenty seven years. Back when it was an unpopular idea and he was in an unpopular party and he he's only he's only been slogging away. But Nigel Farage has literally just sent it for the money. I mean, he well, what what did he do before he entered politics? He did something. But we know one thing. We know one thing. That is that Brexit has also created something positive. Yes. Eventually, we'll have left the European Union. And the positive thing that it has created is that today, in the whole of the European Union, the biggest pro-European movement ever in the history of the Union is in Britain, putting more than one million people in the street. <laughs> The biggest pro-European movement is in the country that is leaving the European mo Union. That's damning, guy. That's a that's an awful thing to say. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> like, it's not in Germany. It's not in Sweden. It's not in France. It's not in Spain or Greece or any of these other countries that get huge amounts of money from the rich ones. Oh no 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 no! It's in the country that's leaving. That they're most pro-European. That's that's sensible, guy. Very, very stirring. <laughs> Fired up my blood there. <laughs> Just <laughs> bravo. And you, let's repeat it. Let me call it. You are, in fact, the heart of it. The origin of it, the most pro-European party in the UK, the most pro-European yeah. party in the UK, not because of opportunism, because there are now maybe a majority to remain, but by conviction, by your conscience, you are the pro-European. But you're not acting in any form of principle. You guys are always arguing that this will cost us money. Okay. I don't care. Going to war with the Nazis is going to cost us money. It's going to cost us lives. People are going to die, and yet we should have done it anyway, which is why we did. I, like, saying, oh, this is going to be expensive, that's not a fucking argument. At least not an argument from principle. So let us use this pro-European energy not only to remain, I have to tell you, in Europe, but also to reform the European Union. Because I have one conviction. I've got one conviction too. Well, actually I've got lots of convictions. Now I say it, what, hang on, you, you literally only have one conviction. That's terrible. But I did credit you with having some convictions, so I was wrong. You only have one of them. But um, the one thing I know that, beyond doubt about the European Union, it is, is never going to be reformed. Never. It will collapse before it's reformed. It's too Byzantine to be reformed. It's ask Majid Majid. I have one conviction. That Brexit happens is also a sign that this European Union needs to be modernized. No shit. <laughs> Any, it, it needs drastic reform, yes. Needs to be more effective. We cannot continue. We cannot continue, dear friends, with a Europe that is always acting too little and too late. Ah, uh, you know what he's asking for, don't you? 
sovereignty. Give us more sovereignty. In fact, they, uh, like, there, are, there are lots of ways they've tried to do this as well. Basically, they want power to raise taxes. They're going to want their own army, which Merkel is all... Obviously, they've all signed off on Merkel, uh, Macron, and whatnot. They're all... And, and obviously, the commission and the the presidents of the councils, they've all signed off on the idea of getting an EU army. Um, they, they're building a suit, uh, an aircraft carrier, I believe. Um, but there, there are also other ways, like um, the the veto that countries have so unless the unless decision uh, i can't remember in what regard it was but unless decision is unanimous um then it doesn't go through and they want to erase that they want to turn it into a majority now so it's it's no longer a a a uh, block of equals it's it's now going to be a german and french interest group that dominates the rest of europe which is one of the reasons that we're getting out in the world order of tomorrow the world order of tomorrow is not a world order based on nation states or countries. It's a world order that is based on empires. Ooh, well, now, this is not the first time that Guy Verhofstadt has used the term empire. In fact, he keeps using this term, and I find that very interesting. Um, an empire, for anyone who doesn't know, is one, one ethnic group dominates others. Multiple others, in fact, and this is why you have, like, you know, the Persian Empire. It's the Persians ruling over a giant landmass. The Mongol Empire, the Mongols ruling over a giant landmass. Blah 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 blah. Um, so, if if we're going to use empire, that's interesting. I'm interested to know the, the quote European Empire. Uh, who are the Europeans going to be dominating over? And, uh, and when I say Europeans, I don't mean French, Spanish, Dutch, Italians, etc. Um, what I'm talking about are the, the proud Europeans, as Sadiq Khan describes himself. He's not a citizen of any one European country, just the continent, you know, just Europe. I'm a European, I'm from Europe. That's very, you know, I mean, Sadiq Khan, very European name. Uh, but he's just from this continent called Europe. It's, you know, no, no other defining characteristics. Now, I would say that's possibly anti-diversity, but then I'm a, I'm a throwback that way. I like my ideology to correspond to reality. I'm, I'm really old hat in that regard. You know, proper old English liberal is like, maybe we should look at actually things that are happening rather than our pie-in-the-sky dreams. But okay, don't worry about me. We'll carry on. China is not a nation. It's a civilization, hum. India, you know it better than I do, is not a nation. There are 2,000 nations in India. There are 20 different languages that are used there. There are four big religions. At the same time, it is the biggest democracy worldwide. I like the way he's making the distinction here now. And he's not wrong either, actually, right? So uh, a nation is an ethnic group. It's not a country. A country is a political unit governed by a state. For example, England is a nation, Wales is a nation, but Britain is the country that they are a part of. They're not politically independent. So by his definition here, what he has managed to delineate is between Europe, European civilization that is governed by the European superstate and British civilization that is governed by the British state. He's unwittingly put us outside of his definition of what a European is on the basis that what was trying to happen was, I mean, like, the, like in his mind, this, I suppose, would be like uh, China, like, absorbing India into China. It would be uh, the two civilizations merging together. It would be unrealistic. The U.S. is also an empire, more than a nation. Oh. Maybe tomorrow they will speak there more Spanish than English. I don't know what will happen. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? That's, that's, that's great. I mean, Spanish is a European language, not a British language. So it'd be great if the United States became more European, wouldn't it, Guy? That's just fucking grand. Just fantastic. And then finally, the Russian Federation. The world of tomorrow is a world of empires in which we, European, and you, British, can only defend your interest, your way of life, by doing it together in a European framework and in the European Union. My God, he is actually an open imperialist. He views the world as a clash of empires. The, wor the world is not a clash of empires, right? Um, there, there is an, a, US, a US hegemony at the moment that is being challenged by China, obviously. But um, these... I don't think you could reasonably call China an empire. 
it is a it's a country it's a civilization i agree but i don't think that makes it an empire um although maybe um but india is a democracy that's not an empire the us is a democracy that's not an empire and st stop before anyone yells ah we're a republic it's a form of democracy um there, the, these things are not empires. What he's talking about are just political blocks, as if every single country is inherently an empire. Every sovereign block is uh, an empire. The, the United States of America is just a country. It's a, it's a, it's, it's just a federal republic. It's not a bloody empire, you lunatic. But anyway, what he's saying is very much akin to sort of the, the Mediterranean world in say, two hundred BC. You know, the, the end of the city-state is drawing nigh, and that's what he views this as. The end of the nation-state is drawing nigh. Um, he's wrong, obviously. I don't think that the nation-state's time has passed yet, and I think that Brexit and Trump are showing us this quite clearly. The This is, in many ways, the nation-state reasserting itself over global interests, a supranational interests or international interests. Um, and I, I think that's actually a good thing. I don't think that there's really any, like, I don't think there's a major threat to the sovereignty of any of the nations around the world at the moment. Like, who's who's threatening whose sovereignty? Who's going to invade who? There's, I, I, don't, I mean, maybe, like, Russia might do some things, but we've got NATO, so is that a problem? China, I suppose, but again, you know, we have NATO for a reason. I don't think, I don't think that Britain is about to get taken over by foreign power, I, I just, that just seems ridiculous to me. You know, I think that we're going to be able to defend our interests. But again, I'll get to that in a minute. Sorry, I'm going off now. And those, and those, dear friends, those who want to defend our standards of living. Right. I don't trust Guy Verhofstadt or any of the other EU types to 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 run an empire and if that's how they view it and i know that um i can never pronounce the woman's name but she's the um defense minister of europe she's 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 had plans for years about projecting european power into africa and asia for example why would you need to do that this is the thing they are not just sitting there thinking well what we can do is just make europe really good which in my opinion would be bad enough anyway no they, they're going to be defending their interests around the world they're going to come into conflict with the United States. I don't want to go into conflict with the United States. I think the United States is a good thing, and I think it's a better thing than the European Union. And I think that that's the side I would rather be on when the when the chips fall down and this it comes to the crunch. I do not want to have to be supporting Germany's new imperial ambitions, basically. A social standard. And hang on, sorry, I know I keep interrupting this guy. Fuck your social standards, by the way. I, I'm not. I don't. I don't care about protecting the the so the, the the living standards of the French and Germans. They can do that just fine on their own, right? Um, but I find it very interesting how he's the, all this talk. Right, we should turn this into the the first European Empire, Emperor Palpatine style. Okay, you can advocate for that, I guess. Because you're a Remainer and you're allowed to say, oh, well, everyone else is an empire. We should become an empire. They're not empires. You shouldn't become an empire. But if we're talking about empires, Mr. Verhofstadt, um, is there anything wrong with us bringing ours back? <laughs> well, I'm saying Kanzuk is an idea that's being floated. And like, hmm, well, that would be a way of defending our interests internationally in this world of empires. Against the Europeans. <laughs> Our British civilization will rise again. Logical standards. <laughs> Our labor standards can only do that. They know it only in the framework of Europe and inside Europe in the center of Britain that take its responsibilities and not is going out of this great project. <laughs> Fucking labor standards have destroyed the Mediterranean economies. Like, there's a reason that like 50% of young people in Greece can't get jobs. It's unreal how much damage they've done to the European, uh, the southern countries. But you know they've got high labor standards. You see, it's fine. It's just fine. I have to tell you, in a world where we see Putin, where we see the Chinese leadership, 
when we see what is happening in Hong Kong for the moment, in a world with Trump. What, in Hong Kong, where they're praising the virtues of the British Empire, and Trump, where he's praising the virtues of Britain. Yeah, I can see how you'd have a problem with this, Mr. I'm really pro-Britain. I can see why you're so upset about this. I mean, you do have an Aston Martini, or whatever it is, and your dog is a British dog that happens to have the French name. So, I mean, I can see why you're so bothered. I have said everything now already. <laughs> and I, I'm going to send a tweet uh, in a few moments uh, about, uh, uh, about it. Amazing. And Tell in a world, in fact, where a British prime minister is proroguing the parliament, <laughs> not for a few days, Ooh. but for five weeks, <gasps> in such a world, we have to work together to defend democracy, parliamentarism, <laughs> And the interest of our citizens. And <laughs> Who elected you, guy? <laughs> Couldn't get re-elected in Belgium, could you? <laughs> Fucking defend democracy! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Unreal that he has the gall to say this. It's... I just can't get over it. How on earth can you... Like, it's, it is genuinely Orwellian. Genuinely Orwellian. The Liberal Democrats, the, as you can see by the, the, the thumbnail of this stream, they are not Liberal and they are not Democrats. Get fucked. The lot of you, honestly, and from the European Union, being like, we're pro-democracy unless you vote the wrong way. Fuck off. Fuck off. How many times, it, uh, literally it's been something like 12 times, where on things like the Lisbon Treaty and other various other treaties that have forced through, they've just either ignored or made people vote twice on these, ref on these decisions, on these referendums. Like, this is, it's unreal that they would claim to be the defenders of democracy. It's, it, it, I don't even, it's bizarre. And we cannot do that. And honestly speaking, we cannot do that <laughs> with the country, without a country, where this democracy has born. In England, in Britain, in Great Britain, in the United Kingdom. And therefore, I hope that the fastest as possible, I've got to tell one thing about British politics, I didn't do it in the whole uh, of my intervention, is that I hope there will be a change. There will be a change, hopefully, with a general election. Listen, right, Guy, I think that you you are kind of fundamentally missing the point behind your veneration of the English invention of modern democracy. And if you look at it, it was mostly England that voted to leave. That was definitely the driving force behind the leave vote, although obviously Wales did as well, and there was a, a sizable chunk of Scotland, Scottish and Northern Irish voters who also chose that. But by constituency, it's a map of England, basically. And so it's it's one of those things where you're sat there going, wow, English democracy, it's so amazing. We need we need you in to teach us about democracy, blah, blah. And, and we're saying, look, you don't understand how democracy works by the way we do it, by our standards. That's our problem with the European Union. That's why we want to leave. And you, you're like, oh, no, 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 stay, stay, stay. Why? Why? You're not listening. You do things wrong. You do things badly. You are corrupt. You, you're effectively, like, every, every month, all of the European Union in Brussels, all of it, their, 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 their papers, their files, their desks, all of this stuff, is transported to Strasbourg, like, I don't know, a couple hundred miles away, by lorry, and set up there for a weekend, or a week or something. It's not very long. When I went, I went to Strasbourg, but that's because they'd moved over for that period of time. It's totally unnecessary. It's a huge waste of money, and yet they do it constantly. There's going to be no end to that. Why are you doing this? It's, and that's just one example of constant waste from these people who have never had to be held to account. You can't get rid of Guy Verhofstadt. There's no way you're going to be able to get rid of any of them. I don't even remember the name of the, um, the, the current president of the commission, um, but I, I, if I recall correctly, she was essentially running unopposed. I'll have to, I'll have to dig that up. But um, 
Callum, if you could if you could do do me a lemon and, and whack that in Discord, I'd appreciate that, man. Um, but I'm pretty sure she actually ended up running unopposed. And so it's just one of those things like, look, you guys don't really get to talk about democracy. It's that's the problem, is that you are not democratic. And it's why we want to leave. A general election will not only be about Brexit, it will be about the character, the future of the British political system. And it will be naturally... Now that is a true point. That's actually a, a good observation. Um, it's the same with Trump as well. Uh, except, But Brexit, especially because of a one-off decision, the choice really wasn't... Uh, I mean, the mechanism of it is, do you want to stay or leave in the European Union? But what it represents is, are we going to be a European civilization or are we going to be a British civilization? Now, the Liberal Democrats are the people who want to be a European civilization, as you can see. Uh, the rest of the country, even the Labour Party, really, if they were to ask, if you if they were to be asked this question, I think they would say. We want to be a British civilization if the two are mutually incompatible. If you can't be both, then I think they would still choose Britain as the civilization that they want to be. Although maybe they wouldn't. Who knows? I don't know how far down the down the globalist rabbit hole Labour have gone at this point. But um, but the Greens and the, the Liberal Democrats, they definitely think of themselves as proud Europeans. ...about your next leader, and if you have to choose... <laughs> between Johnson on the one hand and Corbyn on the other side, well, if it depends from me, I go for Joe Swinson. Right, okay. So you are being actively endorsed by one of the important dignitaries of a foreign power of which we are currently in opposition and negotiations to. Uh, not weird, is it? That's not weird, is it? I mean, like, the Conservative government, it's not weird if... Well, <laughs> we would it be weird if, if you're currently negotiating with a foreign power and then one of the other parties in your country just starts inviting inviting their pro prominent speakers over to in support? Is, is that weird? Is, is that It feels like a betrayal. That's all I'm saying. It, it just feels like they're really taking the fucking piss with this. But anyway, so let's let's go on for go on to the next thing. So the Liberal Democrats have had a lot of success recently. There's no questioning it. Um and Joe, this is all going to Joe Swinson's bulbous head. Lib Dem leader has David Steele movement, uh, moment sorry, as she tells members to prepare for government. Um, actually, before I do this, I'm going to do the super chats. So I've noticed a few going through, and I haven't read them out. So let me quickly do those. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye. Um, don't worry. Um, uh, right, Marusha Dark. Uh, this guy can't be anti-UK. He has a British friend. Exactly. <laughs> uh, oh, hi, that's actually not... Right, there we are. Uh, uh, Uruguayan pesos. It's the equivalent to like 10 bucks. Right, okay, thanks, man. I, don't, I had no idea. I didn't know I had any listeners in Uruguay. Um, and, and see, I didn't call your country gay. How nice am I? Um, uh, the referendum should have been legally binding. Yes, it should. <laughs> um... Watch Religion and Politics by Scott Beach. It's a two-minute clip from 1976 that hilariously mirrors the political discourse today. I oh, promise I'll laugh. Uh, you, you'll laugh, I promise, even. Um, oh, hang on a sec, sorry. Uh, wait, Parliament has to consent to an election. Sargon's about time you all got an actual rich, written constitution. I know that shit out, so there isn't any tyrannical bullshit left. Uh, uh, honestly, I've come, I've, I'm, I'm of the opinion that I don't want a written constitution because there's there's something very British about it being done by consent and by by negotiation and compromise, and I think that is right. Um, I don't I don't like the legalistic nature of the United States because everything is quite clearly set out in stone. It seems to it seems to have a hard edge. That I don't really want Britain to have. Unfortunately, Brexit is giving us that kind of hard edge in our politics, but um, but I I prefer I prefer the kind of flexible nature of things. But the thing is, like it was always based on the idea of being reasonable, and we've come to the position now where there are people who are just not being reasonable. The, the Liberal Democrats, in fact, are just being totally unreasonable about the situation. It's they lost the referendum. A reasonable person would have to say, well, 
okay, I voted, therefore I will abide by the result, therefore I will just accept that that's what we've got to do. I'm not going to try and stop it, because that would be the wrong thing to do. That's the opposite of being reasonable about a defeat in an election. Um, so anyway, I'll put this image up just while I'm waiting. Um, but yeah, so when when people say like Parliament has consent to things, like because it's a very old structure and it evolved over time, um, all of these things are technically done in this way. For example, like to prorogue Parliament, uh, Boris has to ask the Queen, uh, which you know you would say, oh, it was a monarchy, blah, blah, blah. you know, it, well, kind of. But all of these things kind of have to be done by tradition. It's it like it's just the it's a formality, really in this regard um and i like that it is because the how do i how to describe it there's it's its own thing then right it's got defined rules and and procedures and borders and boundaries it's an actual thing that is british democracy and it it's very old it's very complex it's come out of a very primitive history but it was the first country to actually do the things that make free wealthy prosperous societies all of like all of them together and this is what the inspiration for the united states came from like i, t I, I tweeted out i posted on telegram the other day uh, the relevant section of the english bill of rights and a load of americans commented the same thing and this is why i tweeted out and i'm so glad that i'm so glad i got this response actually they're about to be like hmm well it seems like it's incomplete and it's like yes exactly but in the 17th century, that was fucking revolutionary. Like, it, you know, enshrined free speech. Oh, only for parliamentarians. That's true. But that's the point. It's a process of development. And we can, and the, these things have all been superseded by laws made, you know, in like the 80s and 90s and stuff. But like, you, you understand, it, it's the, the principles by which the country has been operating and the, the values that they held dear the fact that these things would end up being enshrined in bills of rights and in, in like constitutional acts and you know magna carta and all that sort of stuff when you go back to 1215 so it's it's the the spirit of the country that is what you're seeing there in the in the evolution of the thing and that's why i don't want to just get an american style constitution i want to continue the spirit of the country the 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 sort of zeitgeist of the way that politics is done here and that's why I'm so angry at the Liberal Democrats, is they're actually breaking that. They're actually ruining this kind of social contract that we actually do have. It's really, really disturbing. And it's it's upsetting the natural natural order of the country. <laughs> you know? I'm getting really annoyed by it. It's like, no, no, no. We we are British. We do things in a certain way, and we go slowly, carefully, and we we do the right thing. That's always what this is about. We do the right thing. And that's all of English history has been about, really. It's in suffer there are there are there are continental authors. Um, I think it was um, I can't see the name of the author now. It's on a table behind me. Uh, but the, in the book, uh, The English Are They Human, he says that it's insufferable that the English always act, or act from principle first. And that's why in the Magna Carta, you've got property rights. Okay, it's only for the barons, yeah, but that ended up going further, didn't it? And then in the, the Bill of Rights, you've got free speech. Sure, it's only for parliamentarians, but that ends up going further too, because once you agree that in principle someone should have it, well, what's your argument for these other people not having it? And then you end up with individual rights, which came out of England. And so everyone has these things, because there's no good argument against it. So anyway, this is why I don't want a written constitution. Also, we do still have guns, although it's difficult to get them because the asinine bank... Well, it's, anyway, I'm not going to get into it. But that is also in the Bill of Rights, that um, people may be armed. So, uh, yeah, anyway, sorry, I'll carry on. Uh, Sargon, are you ready for the e EA of Bannerlord? The EA of it? What the... I, I I don't know what the EA of it is. Um, but honestly, I'm I'm looking forward to my grandchildren playing Bannerlord. I can't wait. Now, obviously, I can't wait till Bannerlord's out, man. I, I dread to think how many hours I've sunk into Mountain Blade. And I hope Bannerlord is good. Um, yeah, Murray Stone. Guy can't be anti-UK as a British friend. Uh, wait, how can you say you love the British if you give a British dog a French name? That's a good question. 
Leave the split between the Tories and Brexit Party while remain a split between the SNP, Greens, Lib Dems and Labour. How is voting UKIP not a wasted vote? Uh, well, I don't want... To, I, I mean, I, I'm i not... I, I'm, a, I'm still a member of UKIP, obviously. I'm still completely in support of the party and the goals, the long-term goals of the party. I think Richard Brain is a fantastic leader. Um, he's really demonstrated some quick intellectual thinking and the courage of his convictions to me recently, which I think is excellent. And I think that if you're actually concerned about the things that we on this channel are concerned about, then UKIP is the party for you. But right now, you are correct that tactically, we have to support Boris. And I'll go into what Boris has been doing in a minute. Um, not necessarily the Conservatives, although that does involve us actually supporting the Conservatives. Um, but this is why I'm actually quite annoyed at Nigel and the Brexit Party. Like, I'm a huge fan of Nigel Farage on a personal level. I'm a massive fan of what he's achieved. I like the fact that he generally has called out almost everything I want him to call out. Um, and I think that the Brexit Party probably was a necessary thing probably was useful to have that as a, a singular thing i'm you know i'm not angry or resentful or anything i think it's a probably a good thing but when it comes to the next general election i mean he's offered the conservatives a pact but that's really his own vanity talking uh if you were thinking in the responsible health of the project that is brexit and the good the long-term good of the nation or the country, sorry, I should use to be, be accurate, my Verhofstadt standards. Um, if you are doing that, then you should not try to undermine the Conservatives anyway, because what you're going to end up doing is splitting the Leave vote, uh, splitting the Leave vote, which will probably ensure that the Liberal Democrats will cl clean up in a bunch of Conservative areas, as the Remainer types in those areas uh, band together and vote Lib Dem. Um, because they're not going to vote for the SNP, probably not going to vote for the Greens either, and Labour seem to have been hollowed out, if the polling's anything to go by. Um, I think Labour are a zombie party walking. I think at the next general election, they will lose probably about half their MPs to the Lib Dems. I think they'll lose, maybe not half, but they'll lose a significant amount to the Liberal Democrats, and I think eventually Joe Swinson will probably become the leader of the opposition. Um, but like with all political predictions, you should never make them because they're probably going to be wrong. But at the moment, from what I've seen, and I'll go through it in a minute, what I mean, um, with the polling, uh, from the moment, from what I've seen, that's what I would think is likely. But I could be wrong. Um, here's hoping for a general election to push these half-wits out of the Conservative Party. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I really hope the Conservatives get an absolute majority in the next general election because then they can, I mean, that would be decisive. And this is why Nigel really does have a responsibility not to stand in any guaranteed conservative seats, or even marginal ones, to be honest. Um, and ones they, they could win if with some active campaigning. I mean, it would be a noble thing for Nigel Farage to say, support Boris. But the thing is, they won't, because they're, they're very hard line on the deal. Um, they, I mean, I don't get me wrong, Theresa May's deal is awful, right? But I don't think Boris actually wants Theresa May's deal. I think essentially what he's doing, and I'll, I'll go into why in a minute, don't worry, I've got, I can back this all up. Um, I think essentially what he's doing is just lip service. And I think that the, the Lib Dems and Labour are right when they call it lip service and uh, and say this is, you know, he's lying or he's he's just paying lip service here because he's, he's actually going for the no deal. I think he is as well. Um, but I, anyway, I'll get into that in a minute. <clears throat> Uh, my God, these Europhiles are so insufferable. Oh, tell me about it, Twisted Friend. It's just, just they it, insufferable is the word. It's just, just grow up. Um, what's worse is when the, the EU inevitably collapses, there will be no self-reflection for them on their part. They'll simply blame everyone and everyone else, everyone else except them. I'm glad you said that. I'm really glad you said that. Because again, I've got a lovely list of articles we're going to go through in a second that will prove exactly that point. Trust me, that, oh, that, is, that is great timing, that comment. Um, even though traitors passed block Brexit bill after the elections, the majority Brexit parliament, can you repeal said bill and push ahead with Brexit? Absolutely. I mean, I do, to be honest with you, like they, I, I haven't been following the legality of the bill because I'm, I'm no legal expert or at all. Um, but uh, Rob was, I saw a headline the, uh, uh, earlier today, I think it was, about Rob having a legal challenge to the bill um, because it is a ridiculous thing. It's, it's genuinely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of traitors in Parliament at the moment. Um, I'm glad you characterise them as such. Uh, why do people in a country appear to be patriotically atrophied? Oh, that's a very good question. Freedom and independence from Germany seems great. Why not for Scotland as well? Yeah, dude, if Scotland votes to leave, they vote to leave. 
I am not going to be angry. I think, you know, and like Guy Verhofstadt, I might think that's a mistake, but I'm not going to sit there and campaign to try and get them to not leave or, uh, you know, reverse the vote, blah, 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 all this sort of shit. It's like, come on, you know, the, the vote is a vote and you have to respect it. If you didn't, if you if you weren't going to respect the vote, why even cast the ballot? Like you know, if you win, you would expect the opposition to respect that vote. So don't give me this shit. I hate this. This actual shit from the Liberal Democrats, and it's I hate the moral posturing as if they're in the right. No, you're totally one hundred percent in the wrong. You voted. We voted. We all abide by the result. That's the deal. If you don't do that, then fuck you fuck anything you want i don't have to listen to you politically at all and well done there joe what that means is you're ruining the political system of the country you're actually destroying it the the whole thing is based on the trust that the vote counts it has to count hello chap oh it's an interesting uh, interesting question to come on to interesting uh, hello chap if brexit is not delivered what do you think should happen well <laughs> uh well i mean like i don't i don't think i'm allowed to call for certain things on the youtube live stream so um I'll, I'll just say we'll make sure the vote counts because it has to count that's that's what the whole thing is predicated on but the why do what, uh, sorry I, don't, I just noticed i didn't answer why do your people people in your country appear to be politically at atrophied um i would say 30 years of the drip feed of globalist propaganda uh, sorry, not 30, 20 years, I'd say. Uh, since the si since the Blair government, so 22 years, um, this the the insidious nature of leftist activism has really affected Britain. Um, and we've been quite susceptible to it because of the sort of reasonable compromise mentality that we have. Um, but it turns out you can't make a reasonable compromise with globalists who don't believe gender exists, they think the nation state is evil. They think that England and Britain are racist countries. Inherently, this is Joe Swinson's opinion. She thinks Britain is a fundamentally racist country. She said this in an interview a few months ago, and it's like right, Kate, that you can't have a reasonable compromise with people who just think you are evil, and your existence is wrong. We can't compromise with those people, so we just vote against them. We vote for the other thing, and we ignore them. We marginalize that idea, just like we marginalize Nazism. That's why we don't, believe it or not, right, being a Nazi, denying the Holocaust, is not illegal in this country. It's probably been made illegal through, any, through some kind of arcane sort of, well, actually, it's, you, you're allowed to be a Nazi, but if you post something to Instagram or Facebook or whatever, then that was a malicious communications, even though that's not what the act was for. And now you, we've we've arrested you. So, like, unlike in Germany, where it's just illegal to be a Nazi, obviously, um, and in Poland as well, I believe. Um, but you you can actually deny the Holocaust. You can actually do these things. It's not illegal to do. We just don't agree with them, and so we vote against them. And this is the point of being a reasonable, sensible country. So the the Liberal Democrats just need to be marginalised. It should be shameful to be a Remainer at this point. Shameful to be. So just grandiose and puffed up while actually undermining the integrity of democracy in this country. It's just it's staggering to me. Staggering. Um, it's so, uh, Marisha again, um, it's so easy to disarm authoritarians like Guy. Just take moral high ground and ask him directly why he believes in forced association. No answer. That is a great point, but I'll never get the opportunity to uh, to speak to him. So... You know, it's, I mean, and, and if Guy Verhofstadt's ever watching, dude, come on my podcast. I'd love to talk to you about these things. Um, oh, by the way, uh, Callum just sent me an article. Sorry, I'll, I, I, w I stand corrected. Um, apparently, a year ago, uh, in twenty eighth of twenty uh, fifth of May, twenty eighteen, a woman who posted Holocaust denial songs to YouTube convicted. Yeah. So, but. The um so the, the this is what I'm saying, Callum. Technically, you are you are allowed to say I don't think the Holocaust happened. Feel free clipping that. Um, but if you post it to yeah, see, it's grossly offensive material to YouTube. See, that's that's how they're getting you on on malicious communications. Um, it's not that the the actual just belief itself is illegal. Unlike in Germany, where David Irving was arrested. I mean, you know, I don't agree with 
what he believes, but I don't think he should be arrested for writing a book. Anyway. <clears throat> um, yeah, great point, Marussia. Um, I, I, I would love to bring it to him. Uh, and you're at, but you're absolutely right. Uh, but the, the EU obviously believes in forced association. Um, they call it free association, though. Because, every, like everything they do, it, it's just an Orwellian lie. Uh, Guy Verhofstadt trying ever so hard to bring Britain into his grand plan to, in, uh, grand plan to invade Russia in winter. Ooh, I like the way this is going. After 1812 and 1941, third time's a charm, I guess. Yeah, it's, it, they do talk about Russia an awful lot. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can see why they would, but let's be honest. Russia's not going to invade Europe. That's is not going to happen. And invading Russia is a dumb idea. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave the Russians alone to be Russian. That's, I mean, it's, I, I'm just one of those old-fashioned sovereign types who thinks that every country should have their sovereignty. Uh, any idea what happens if Brexit is cancelled? Nope. We are all flying in very unfamiliar territory. We're blind. We don't know what's coming next, but it will be very interesting. Um, no one knows what's going to happen. And anyone who tells you they do, that they do is wrong. Uh, what score does Verhofstadt's political speech get in relation to any of the likes of Amy Schumer's Leather Special or Hannah Gadsby's Nanette? Um, well, I mean, I th anyway, well, he was he was entertaining. You know, he was in a very friendly audience, so he could basically say whatever he liked, and they'd get a massive round of applause. So you know, it was, it was a lot better than Amy Schumer's comedy. <laughs> Doing a series on Brexit for some US newspapers with the aim of ending on some live reporting from October the 31st. Um, I was planning to interview people on both sides interested in the interview. Sure, um, I'll doubtless be at Parliament um, on or around October the 31st. Let me, let me quickly... There's bound to be an event that I've agreed to go to on Facebook. Yeah, I know I'm using Facebook, just don't shoot me. Um... Okay, apparently apparently I, I have not. Have I not? I, I'm sure I would have done. Sorry, let me find this. Huh. I'm surprised that there doesn't appear to be an event around the 31st of October that I can find that... You know, people could uh, organise around. Maybe I should create one, um, but like I, I don't know, I don't know. I guess someone from UKIP can do it. Um, but it, you know, if someone does create an event for this sort of thing, um, let me know and I'll share it on my Facebook and Telegram, so uh, so you guys can know as well. Uh, this is like Hillary Clinton campaigning three years into the Trump presidency. What's the point? Uh, exactly. Yes, it is exactly like that. It's really insufferable. It just go away. And this, this is <laughs> the the way that you know that this is a class issue as well. It's about the 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 Remainer middle class uh, being angry at everyone else, especially the working classes. Um, is because Ian Hislop, um, a presenter and editor of magazines. Um, political magazines in the UK. Um, he has spent an awful lot of time on a program called Have I Got News For You, which is a comedy program which talks about news, um, uh, which incidentally is one of the places where Boris Johnson became so popular uh, going on this show. Um, he had spent a lot of time criticising the EU. In fact, he made the case against them quite often. And then he cucked to remain. And now he's after after you know, it was in like twenty seventeen sometime he was saying well just because like we you know we lost this way doesn't mean we can't carry on the argument it's like no that's exactly what it means it means the decision's been made there's no point carrying on the argument we have made that decision it's wasting everyone's time and you're doing it because you're salty you're salty because you're lost um, Nat from Cheshire Cat Studios. Um, don't I? Aren't I due to? I was supposed to do an interview with you guys, and I recall I couldn't find the time to do it. Um, if you guys, if you guys would like me on again, um, just contact Callum. Um, uh, one or two. I work as an extra and a barmaid in a working men's club. I hear from both places about Brexit. Uh, uh, both places about Brexit from the two different types of people there. Uh, re revealing when pro-Brexit working men keep the talk political and pragmatic, the middle-class showbiz leavers always revert to personal attacks on the leavers, petty and disgusting. Well, that's really interesting, and that's 
um, basically, um, basically what I've what I've noticed myself, like the the working the the working men basically, like the the people I've been speaking to. There's a very noticeable class divide between the remainers and leavers, and you can see it in every picture, like the gammons, uh, the relievers. You know, they, they they're always those protests. You can they, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but you can tell by looking at someone whether they're middle class or working class a lot of the time. And it does tend to be overwhelmingly working class and older versus overwhelmingly um, middle class and not necessarily young, but younger. So like, you know, mid 30s, early 40s. Um, But that's not exclusive or anything like that. Uh, But no, I've noticed the same thing. Um, also, Callum, yes. No, shush. <laughs> uh, Adam and his apple. Hey, man. Uh, Adam and his apple is a channel you should subscribe to, by the way. Um, Remainer's arguments are primarily based on the economy. Yes. In that case, Zimbabwe should become Rhodesia again under the stewardship of the crown. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that's a great point. Why would you want to leave the British Empire, Rhodesia? <laughs> you could make all of the Remainer arguments, but you'll be worse off. You'll lose money. <laughs> you'll you'll end up with a dictator for fifty years who ends up dying, and then no one turns up to his funeral. You know that's a that's an absolutely fantastic point. Restore the empire. Hey, everyone's talking about empires these days. It's the cool new thing to do. So I'm going to advocate for an empire. I thought was a good idea. Uh, tell Darth Hofstadt. As Veer Hofstadt. Um, but uh, I've got one conviction too. Look up Malcolm X's speech on nationalism. Ooh, I bet that's spicy. <laughs> I've not seen it, but I bet it's good. Uh, a European talking about an empire in front of a crowd to rousing applause. Make my freedom senses tingle. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> how from Florida, hey, man. But no, that's exactly it. Like, like I, I don't, I, I get nervous when someone with a, a European accent starts talking in glowing terms about empires. To, to roaring crowds. I mean, it, this this is the thing, right? The British Empire wasn't like a, a conquest, a single conquest. It was con- it was settlement, you know. So it was the it wasn't a general just you know conquering states. I mean that did happen, but like it wasn't all at once, you know. It was it was a thing that grew over a long period of time, um, obviously through war and obviously things like that. But it's it it wasn't just like. The sort of Hitlerian, Napoleon esque, uh, you know, great man conquers in the name of country, you know. So it's it's a different thing, in my mind. But maybe and maybe I'm wrong for thinking that. Who knows? But uh, but that's how I see it. And so yeah, I do get kind of nervous when you've got the charismatic speaker in front of an audience who are cheering for their their great imp- imperial project. But uh, but I mean, I'm just a giant hypocrite because you know, Kanzak now. <laughs> I think it's right. Even then, what would that even mean? I mean, by the end of the by the end of the British Empire, it was decentralized. It was it was like self rule was something that almost all of the colonies had. So, what does that even mean? You know, like they're, they're not taking instruction from Westminster. You know, it's it's more or less just an alliance of countries with with shared values. Um, Vierhofstadt is the spitting image of the of Emperor Palpatine. All he needs is a hood and cloak. Well, yeah, he he literally is saying, let's turn this, you know, European Union into the first European Empire. It's like, yeah, no. Uh, God Emperor Trump should invade Europe. Why? There's just French and Germans there. It smells of cheese. No, I, I do quite like Europe, actually. Um, it is a nice place to go, but I don't think anyone should invade it. Um, if things go socialist in the UK, you're always welcome here, Carl. Um, thank you, but I don't think they're actually going to go socialist. I, I think that Brexit has destroyed the threat of Corbyn. Uh, for the meantime, I, I think that uh, and I'll show you in a minute why. Um, I'll, I will get to this in a second. Um, get the British on. We need more Britishness. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to do more streams of the uh, British and academic agent. Um. <laughs> pro- pro- probably not wise, Callum. <laughs> Sorry. <It's> just... <laughs> Although that would be funny. Sorry, I can't. I can't. I can't say anything there. Um. Is is guy a lizard person, elf, demon, or alien? Well, I have seen no proof that he's not. We're gonna have to do the thing test and see if his blood jumps out of the thing. Um, 
Britain is the last bastion of Western ideas in Europe. Uh, well, liberal ideas, really. Uh, the EU was created to rival the US. The EU imperialism is as much an enemy to the US as China. Yeah, that's how it will be viewed. So there's no question of it. There is no question that the European Union will be arrogant and be interested in being an imperial power opposite the United States. And I just don't think that's wise. Uh, I don't think it's moral either, to be honest. Um, I think the, the, the US is the, the best, ca best case scenario at the moment. I just don't t trust the Germans and the French to do this. Uh, whether it's Guy, Bernie, or Corbyn, they all sound convincing until you put someone next to them to counter them in real time, then they crumble. Yeah, I would love to. I'd love to see them actually talking to the opposition. Um, God Emperor Sargon, glorious leader of the Second Great British Empire. Where do I sign up? Unfortunately, you can't. Um, but anyway, right. Let me get onto a few things. So. Right, here we go. Lib Dem leader has Davis still moving, so she's preparing for government because the Lib Dems have had a lot of defections recently uh, to them, not away from them, uh, because they are the unequivocal party of Remain. There's no question of it. They they are banging that drum. They are shiny-eyed zealots, as Joe Swinson just happens to look here. Um, they, they, they are true believers in their holidays to the south of France that don't require visas and their income they're, they're very concerned that they'll be able to get you know avocado smashed avocado when they go to a restaurant who is going to be serving their pret their coffee and pret they are very they are true believers in their own living standards that's what it is for the lib dems and they won't change their mind under any condition they have decided i mean this was what joe swinson said in an interview if there's a second referendum and they, and they came back leave again would you change your mind? And she was just like, no, I'm not going to go against my principles. And I was like, right, okay. All right, well, there we go. There's just, for you, it is a principle to uphold your living standards by being in the EU. Even though I think that your living standards would actually be higher outside of it. And I think the EU thinks that too. But don't worry about that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, th this is what it's about. This is what it's all about for the Liberal Democrats. It's all about their comfort. <laughs> like, they, they, they could make the argument for not leaving the EU is the same argument is for not going to war against Hitler. They could easily say, well, no, it's going to impact my living standards. I'm not working in a factory making munitions while my husband goes out and fights on the front lines. I'm not doing that. Therefore, we're not going to go to war with Hitler. No, too much. it's too much to sacrifice. We're not going to do it just because it's the right thing to do. It's too much to sacrifice. Like, okay, get fucked. Um, but I think this is a wildly arrogant uh, opinion because... The, these are two polls that came in uh, yesterday. Uh, they're, they're comrades and opinion, which is regular polling in the UK, and they show quite a large spread, but at no point do the Liberal Democrats look like they're anywhere near forming a government. If you can see the, the bottom one, Conservatives were up to 37%, which is pretty staggering, and I think uh, overestimation. Labour at 25, Lib Dems at 16, Brexit at 13, Greens at 2, and the comrades one with the Conservatives at 28, Labour on 27, Lib Dems on 20, Brexit on 13, Green on 5. Um, that 20%, that, like, you are not going to be invited into a government. It'll be the Conservatives and the Brexit Party, most likely. So, sitting there going, we're ready for government. Well, I hope you, I hope you don't get it, obviously, because their primary thing that was agreed at this conference was to cancel Brexit without a second referendum if they win election. Now, I would hope that even the Remain voting members of the public would say, look, you can't just do that. I mean, we did vote on this. We voted to leave. I mean, it's undermining the sovereignty of the country to stay in the European Union, obviously. It's undermining the, democ the strength of democracy in Britain to go against a, a national referendum that was the most people voting in the history of this country. Like, there is no more clear mandate. And the, the Liberal Dems, for the concern of their living standards and their ability to get food from the, food from Spain or the Dutch cheeses, things, you know, the things that make their lives nice and convenient and middle class for the sake of their fucking living standards, are like, no, fuck democracy in this country. And they are the smuggest cunts in the world about it the fucking smuggest no 
We're voting for our own comfort, our own self-interest. Fuck principle. Fuck right and wrong. Fuck the system that we're even in. We vote for our pensions. <laughs> like, it's so naked. It's so naked. But, and, and I'll, in fact, since I'm on the subject, right, this, this will get me a copyright strike. But I couldn't, I couldn't not put this in. This caller speaks for me. Listeners hail this passionate anti-Brexit call. Listen to this. It's another stunt, another lie. It's so important, and leading up to the last four, three, four, five weeks, what I know what we'll do, we'll shut down Parliament. That's, that's causing pain for people. People like me, who won't follow Brexiteers off the cliff until they tell me it's better going than what we've got. And they haven't come near it yet. Listen to that fear and weakness. We're going off the cliff. You mean you don't know where you're going? You don't know what's going to happen? Okay. Is it going to be better than what we've got? Is that the only reason to do it? Is it that the only reason to do it? It's just going to be... Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll cut him off a bit. I'll let him carry on. So I'm not going to follow you and nor 49% of the other people who voted with me. And, and for Johnson, you, for you, Phil, is that the, is that the central reason? Because I, I, you, you'll know if you listen, I get a lot of callers saying, we voted on, the tw- on, on 2016, we've got to do it, we've got to do it, we've got to do it. Is the reason you're still fighting it and you're still thankful that people are fighting it because you, are, you, because you feel people are asking you to do something that will harm you? Absolutely, 100%, Sheila. You've absolutely nailed it. It Central point. Not even... This isn't like a pragmatic ancillary point to the main principled argument that they're making. No, 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 no. No. This is their main fucking point. My living standards will be affected. I'm concerned that I won't get the things I want. We've gone from quickest... Quickest deal in history, best deal in history. Have your cake and eat it. Three hundred and fifty million pounds to hoarding week, body anyway. bags. <laughs> hoarding body bags. That's hoarding body bags. That's what they're doing. Jesus fucking Christ! You're not going to be able to get cottage cheese from whatever region of France. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps you might have to order that in specifically or something like that. All right. It's, it's not going to be the end of the world. You're not going to die. 70% of our food comes from outside of the European Union. Half of it is produced here. I don't see why the places that already sell us food won't sell us more food. We have money. We have lots of money, in fact, when we leave the European Union. Money to burn, apparently. So why don't we, why don't we buy the things we want from elsewhere? And you know what? I think the Union will, cr- will cuck. I think they'll be like, oh, shit. Well, I mean, look at what's going to happen to Ireland. Fuck me. Ireland is going to be destroyed if they don't give us what we want. Is that something you're willing to put on the altar of the European Union? Is that something you're fine with? Their refusal to do a deal will mean that they are choosing for Ireland to go bankrupt and be ruined. They know it. They, The Irish are saying this all the time. They are afraid of this, but Guy Verhofstadt isn't going to be impacted by that, is he? You know, Liberal Democrats won't be impressed by that, will they? Doesn't matter to them. To, to, to 10 pence off. Someone on your show a few days ago said, imagine this, if it was a car crash, and this is exactly what he said, the EU's car, our car, the UK's car, will be battered. But I'll tell you what he said, the EU's car is going to be worse. You really think that I'm going to follow you off the cliff and leave on that? That is, people aren't even listening, they're not even hearing themselves when they talk. Benefits, what were the benefits? There are no benefits now. All Brexiteers say if we won, we won, we won, we won. So I say, there's no benefits because there aren't any benefits because it was a lie. Phil, We've you need to stay theory. cool, this can't be... See, it's just about what you can get. It's just what, what am I benefited by? You're benefited by being in the right, by doing the right thing, by being someone who's actually taken a just path, just saying... Like the Remain position at the moment is unjust. It goes against the foundation of the country. It's wrong. It's a moral wrong to be a Remainer. What is wrong with you? Why do I have to explain this? But anyway, Liberal Democrats, full on, fuck Brexit, fuck you. We, we are voting for our living standards. That's the only thing they're interested in, right? As, uh, as a commenter said earlier, they'll blame everyone but themselves. My... God, didn't you call it? Jean-Claude Juncker, Brexit is a failure of Britain, not the European Union. Sorry, sorry, hang on. Guy Verhofstadt said the European Union was shit and needed reform. 
Right? You get hardcore Remainers like Green uh, MEP, ex-Mayor of Sheffield, Majid Majid, who actually got the shock of their lives when they go to the European Union, like, hell, this is shit. I think it's racist, because he thinks everything's racist. And this is not going to be reformed. Like, Nigel Farage has been there for 27 years, doing exactly the same thing. The UKIP guys were there for 25 fucking years, doing exactly the same thing. Like, they know it can't be reformed. You've got no mechanism to do it. And there's no particular incentive for these bureaucrats to do it because they've got all of your money. We pay a billion a month. And for the extension in the beginning of 2019, still under Theresa May, they were saying that if we wanted to extend Article 50, it's going to cost us another billion a month. Like, this is this is our money that we're pouring down the fucking drain. And yet Boris Johnson's like, oh, maybe we should create a... We could build a bridge between Ireland and Scotland, Northern Ireland and Scotland, link up the UK even further. Wouldn't that be great? And they were like, oh, that, that's going to cost 15 billion, as the engineers say. It's like, so? Fucking so what? Well, isn't that like six months of us being in the European Union? Like, that's what that costs, motherfuckers. All right? You are quite flippant with our money, if it's what you want, but if it's an idea to improve the economy of Northern Ireland and Scotland by adding extra trade and transport between them, oh, it's just too expensive, too expensive, suddenly we don't have the money. Fuck off. Fuck off. But anyway, let's uh, let's hear how how this is the failure of Britain from Mr. Juncker. I've got 22 minutes long. Shit, I didn't realise it was that long. I haven't listened to this yet, so. We'll see you for a few minutes. Before he hands over the reins of power, we meet uh, the EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker here at the headquarters of the EU Commission in Brussels to discuss in this uncut interview his legacy for Europe. So, Mr. President, many thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure. This was a big week for the EU Commission as the President-elect Mrs. Ursula von der Leyen unveiled her new commission. So, how do you feel about it? And when you remember your first days in the presidency, do you feel a bit of nostalgia? Uh, yes, I know. I'm, I'm happy to leave. And I'm unhappy not to stay. Uh, I, I do think that uh, the team presented by uh, President von der Leyen is an excellent team. Mainly because seven, six, eight uh, of my commissioners are still members of the new uh, commission. She did it well. And one of your closest aides here in the EU Commission, Margarita Sinas, got promoted as a vice president of the new yeah. uh, EU Commission. But there is a lot of controversy around new portfolios and new names of the portfolio. I cannot be asked to listen to all this. Right, okay, so. Uh, he said that the UK, um, Brexit is a tragedy and the failure, but the failure is of Britain, not the European Union. Also, he said the UK has only ever been part-time Europeans. Yeah, that's that's, that's really quite true. Um, we we absolutely were very, like, you know, half in, half out, uh, because the European Union is not a good fit for us. Being ruled by Germany and France is not a good fit for Britain, because we're a different country with different traditions and a different outlook on the world. That's why. Um Brexit from its beginning had to do with the fact that not a single British government was openly defending and explaining the place of Britain in the European Union. If you are telling the people over decades this is not exactly what we wanted, don't be surprised if a referendum is answered in a negative way. Well, look, they were just repeating what they were being told by the electorate. They weren't declaring it to the electorate. And you can go and speak to any 70-year-old person who 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 is any interest in any of this, and they'll say, well, we voted for a common uh, market or a common... Um, a common coal area or something uh, originally, and the, we do not have what we promised. I spoke to so many during this whole thing where they're, they're just, well, just, this isn't what we voted for. You know, we didn't vote to give away the country, and so now we're voting to leave, to to, to keep it. And it's like, good. <laughs> the problem is not that the, the the people are saying, like, you know, well, you know the, we're not openly defending the European uh, project. The problem is that now there are some people, a lot of people who are in favour of the European Union. You've spent a lot of time proselytizing in favor of it, and you're annoyed that there was a reasonable objection to it. I expected the decision to leave because of this matraquage, as the French would say, repeating day after day that we are there but we don't want to be is producing obvious results. It's just that we've never really wanted to be. We've never wanted the things that you want. Britain's always been a resisting force 
to the centralization and improvement of the European project as a political entity. Like they, that's not what we were in for. We we were in instantly for economic reasons. Um, that is a decision taken by British friends. My impression is that they want to leave, according to the rest, of the result of the rest of referendum. This is a lose-lose situation. More losses for Britain, also losses for the rest of the European Union. It's a tragedy and is a failure, but I think it's mine. I don't think it's mine, sorry. It's everyone else's, because I didn't decide to have this referendum. I was not intervening in the EU referendum re explanation because Prime Minister Cameron asked me not to intervene. Um, blah, blah, blah. Right, so yeah, like, uh, like the chap said, they're going to blame everyone but themselves. But the thing is, Verhofstadt has said that it's, you know, he disagrees, but it is, um, it is something that is uh, noted by Miss Merkel. She has noticed that Britain's doing remarkably well since the referendum itself and will continue to do better. Merkel warns of danger to EU of a Singapore-style UK on its border. Oh no, that sounds terrible. Singapore's a shithole, isn't it? <laughs> like Singapore's not a good country or anything. <laughs> I'd, I'd be more aimed for a Hong Kong style, but anyway. So she's highlighted the economic danger posed by Britain if it is allowed to become Singapore on Thames, as Boris Johnson's Brexit envoy outlined in a plan to ditch the UK's commitment to stay aligned to the EU's social and environmental standards. In talks with the European officials, the Prime Minister negotiator David Frost insisted the UK is seeking a clean break from an array of the bloc's regulations, a policy choice from the new British government that has caused alarm in other EU capitals. Good. That is exactly what I want to hear, right? What they're saying here is Britain has decided to do something and the Europeans are worried that it's going to fuck them over. <laughs> it really is the yes minister thing right, at this point. Um, but no, th this, is, this is very, very good. It means that Boris Johnson is going to be doing things to make Britain competitive. This is something, obviously, that the Labour Party hates because they don't want Britain to compete because that means Britain might win because Britain does tend to win most of the competitions that it's placed itself into, at least in the last sort of 300 years. Well, that's the length of time Britain's existed, actually. So, yes, it does. Um, there's... There, it, it, it's And this is what Boris Johnson said. You know, it, it, it's foolish to bet against the British. That was what he said. And I was like, geez, that's a great turn of phrase. Because, I mean, just look at the history. So, uh, anyway. They, they are worried that we're going to become a... Uh, a low regulated tax haven off of the uh, off the coast of Europe and just outcompete them. Uh, Merkel told German parliamentarians, we still have every chance of getting an orderly Brexit, and the German government will do everything it can to make that possible, right for the last day, but I also say we're prepared for a disorderly Brexit. Uh, the fact remains that after the withdrawal of Britain, we have an economic competitor at our door, even if we want to keep close economic, foreign, and security cooperation and friendly relations. See? Fucking... They view us as enemies. That's the German way. <laughs> we, on the one hand, as the Europeans, on the one hand, as Europeans, we are weaker, fellow Europeans, with Britain's exit. This has to be said. But on the other hand, this is the moment to develop new strengths. No country in the world can solve its problems alone. And if we all work against each other, we will not win. We, I believe in win-win situations if we work together. That, that's right. And you're going to work together by force. They're going, eventually, the European Union is going to be compelling people by force. I fucking promise you. You are going to, th this is what they're talking about when they say empire. You know, Britain, Britain is a country that believes in a plurality of things. That they can all exist and compete together without destroying one another. That's the general mindset that's being laid out by the Conservatives there. That's not Merkel's mindset. If you are not with us, you are against us. So that's, that's, that's the way they view these things. And that's what she's saying. That's literally what she's fucking saying. Um, but yeah, so it's not like they don't have anything to worry about because Brexit is actually already making Britain a better place. Um, they, they go on about the, the chaos and confusion, right? So the city expected economic data released this week to make grim reading. Global trade is slowing, the central banks in the US, blah, blah, blah. Except that's not what happened. First, we learned the overall economy expanded by 0.3% in July, significantly faster than the 0.1% expected, better than most of our main rivals. Next, we found out that the trade deficit narrowed slightly as imports fell. Finally, we learned that employment was at record highs and that wages were still growing at record rates. Oh, shit, Merkel. 
What? Sorry, Veer Hofstadt will say, the, the European project's a good idea. Is it? Merely saying that we're going to leave the European project is making our country better for the people who live in it. Just saying it. One advisory vote has got unemployment down to standards that haven't been seen since the, before Labour got in power in the 70s. Like, wages are growing at record rates. We just said we're going to do this. Imagine what happens when we actually do it. And the Conservatives, at least, they have the right idea. That's right. Be be competitive. Be aggressive in how our trade works. And Europe will have to change. They will have to liberalise. They will have to stop being so authoritarian. But anyway, and the Chancellor is about to start spending money with carefree abandon, which is good. And there's no reason why things why it shouldn't improve from here. Because remember, right? We spend um, overall something like nine billion net on the EU. Uh, well. Most the most conservative. So the, this this is a contested figure because everything about the EU is Byzantine and uncertain. But the most the the most conservative re, pro Remain figure I could get for the amount that the UK gives the EU every year in total net overall, um, without the rebates and you know reinvestment into the UK was something like nine billion, eight point nine billion. So we'll say we'll say nine billion. So that's that's about seven hundred and fifty million pounds a month. That's a lot of money to just send away to support the European bureaucracy and to give to other European countries. I mean, like, one one year, or two two years worth of European payments will pay for Boris's bridge. We already have that money earmarked and sent out, so it's not like our taxes are going to go up if we just re we actually appropriate this money to ourselves, you know, the country that made it, and actually use it on improving our country. My God, like we could do a lot of really good stuff for our own country. We don't need Europe. We don't need them. They know we don't need them. They're afraid of us being an economic competitor to an entire continent. Our economy is reflecting this by just saying we're going to go in this direction. Like, this is going to work. In fact, there are two explanations. Blah, 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 blah. Right, okay, no, that's fine. Uh, that's enough Enough from there. So this is where things start getting memeable. Right? Boris Johnson likens UK to the Hulk. As Brexit Secretary says landing zone is in sight for a deal. Yeah, they, they fucking better, like, get a deal with us. Because this is... I mean, go Boris. Just fucking go Boris. I I love this analogy. I love it. It's it's so it's so naff, but so typically British and Boris-ish. So Boris Johnson has vowed the UK will break out of the manacles of the EU like the Incredible Hulk, just as his Brexit secretary revealed a landing zone inside for Brussels. Well, like I said, there's there's no question of it. If if the uh, if the information that we have from the government, from the, the official statistics, um, is anything to go by, then yes, we are act actually already doing this, right? So using the comic book analogy, the Prime Minister said that Britain would be like Dr. R Robert Bruce Banner, the Hulk's physically weak and withdrawn physicist alter ego, who transformed into the green-skinned superhero who became angry. What the fuck is this? This is so funny. Banner might be bound in manacles, but when provoked, he would explode out of them, Mr. Johnson told the Mail on Sunday. Hulk always escaped, no matter how tight he seemed about it to be. And that is the case for this country. We will come out on October 31st and we'll get it done. The matter Hulk gets, the stronger Hulk gets. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's just, just go, Boris. Just fuck him. Fuck him. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. This is going to be great. Fuck it. We've got we have got full confidence in in the the spirit of the country. We've we've got that can do attitude. We'll get on with it and get it done. <laughs> you know, we'll all keep working really fucking hard. We're, this is gonna work. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Obviously, the globalist leftist cuckold Mark Ruffalo. I, I don't even know who this guy is, apart from the fact that he plays Bruce Banner in the Avengers movie. Um, Boris Johnson forgets that the Hulk only fights for the good of the whole. <sighs> That's quite hegemonic, and I really don't think that. Like, I mean, I I grew up with the Incredible Hulk being essentially like a monster, <laughs> so you know he didn't didn't kill people, but he did destroy a lot of shit. So anyway, I agree. Probably not the best analogy. But I love the fact that um, the Boris is, is just sticking to his guns and being like, no, this is going to be good. 
because that's what he's saying. This is, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be fucking successful at the end of this, and I think he's right. I mean, I like the fact that he's spending five billion pounds of the money that we give the EU to build no Royal Navy frigates, bring shipbuilding home. Well, why the fuck not? I mean, again, we are an island. It's really, really sensible if we have a strong shipbuilding tradition because we might need it because we are an island. I mean, this is just no question of it, is there, really? It's it's amazing that an island might be like, yeah, no, we don't actually need to build ships. Like, we don't need to build our own navy and warships and to defend ourselves. Why, why would an island nation need that? that means, that's so silly. That's so, that's so 19th century, sir. You know, I mean, don't worry about the fact that we actually might need to deploy them at some point because the French are attacking our fishing vessels, even when we had permission to fish there. But, um, yeah, I, I think they'll be used against the French. <laughs> I'm joking. They, they won't be used against the French. Well, I don't think they'll be used against the French. Um, anyway, it doesn't look like Boris is actually doing very much in the... The, the reason I said that I'd come back to Boris... Um, paying lip service to Theresa May's deal and getting a deal, uh, because the repeated um, the repeated uh, commentary on him, you know, th this is exactly this was, right? Um, the, the landing zone is in sight for a deal with Brussels. Uh, possibly. Uh, I don't know. Um, but also, Brussels doesn't think so. <laughs> uh, they, they, they think that they're going to carry on as they are, and... I think that Boris will carry on as he will. I mean, he's been unbelievably firm on the point of not not extending past October the 31st. And again, like he said, I'd rather be dead in a ditch. Good for him. Totally, totally in support of what he's doing here. Um, and in fact, he has said, I won't discuss a Brexit extension beyond October the 31st. Good. Fucking good. Boris, you are the fucking man right now. Don't fuck this up, son. You're doing great, actually. You are, you are memeable. You have got the economy running well. You've got a good plan for how to actually make the country richer when we leave after a bit of turbulence. And you're sticking to your claim. And like I said, you're funny. You're fucking... And you're fucking lovable in a lot of ways, goddammit. Have you... Has anyone watched any of his... um Any of his videos? Huh? Let me let me get one up. Give me a second. These, these are just the... F they're so adorkable. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds such a silly thing to say, but it's genuinely how I feel about it. You'll see you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean when this loads. Come on, Facebook. Here we go. <laughs> but, okay. Hi folks, can you hear me? I'm it's it, this is Boris here. I'm about to fly back from Leeds Airport where I've uh, been uh just today talking to some uh people at the end of a very very busy week now monday i was in dublin and i had to see leo varadkar who's the irish teacher a very very nice guy and we were trying to see whether we could make any progress on uh the deal that we need to do to come out of the eu by october the 31st and i am cautiously optimistic about that um we then had a uh session in parliament uh, quite a rowdy session, you may have noticed it got on the news, uh, all sorts of excitements in Parliament uh, because we need to uh, have a Queen's speech, so Parliament is now in recess but some MPs uh, thought that that was, you know, uh, anti-democratic even though we offered them uh, a, an election twice, which they turned down spinelessly. Uh, they off we offered them a, an election, Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party, mysteriously decided they didn't want a, an election and they said they say that, that, that we're anti-democratic for wanting a Queen's speech after the longest session of Parliament, by the way, since... Right, I'm going to stop him because he's just going on about, you know, the things that had happened the other day. But that, that you, see what, you see what I mean? Just, okay, I'm going yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this Instagram influence a bit and just, hi, hi folks, can you, can you hear me? Can you see me? Oh, it's Boris here. It, like, I like that. I like the fact that he's going to do that. I, I mean, you know, and even if, even if it was politicians I don't like doing it, I would still say that's a good idea. They should do it. You know, I want just unfiltered them just talking, unfiltered, un, unstage managed. I'm be I'm way beyond the big hoo ha and show of it. Just talk to me about what you think. Let me get an idea of the kind of person you are, so I can get an idea of the kind of things you're likely to do, and see how reasonable you can be. And this is the thing, Boris is doing it like confidence in his own ideas, but um. 
Right, yeah, so they, they reject that there's been huge progress, and I don't know whether they say in this article, but I read also the other day that the Brexit negotiating team has been cut to four people now. Um, so yeah, it uh, basically, Boris is just fluffing up, oh yeah, yeah, well, everything's going great, everything's going great. Uh, but they think that it's going badly, and this uh, this seems to be a way for them of essentially saying that Boris is fucking us, which is what the BBC's Katia Adler suggested. Uh, the EU is being outplayed by Boris Johnson, because he's effectively just just sidestepping them. He doesn't really need to negotiate with them at this point. He's He's been laying the groundwork for no deal. We're prepared. The Americans are there. The you know the the rest. There are a bunch of others as well who said they were going to have deals with us. I can't remember exactly who they are offhand. Uh, just a bunch of other countries. You know, and at the end of the day, we, we'll be fine. We'll be fucking fine. You whiners. So he's he's preparing for this, and they uh, they're annoyed by this. Boris Johnson has totally ignored European Commission in recent weeks, according to the BBC Europe's correspondent Katya Adler. She revealed that leading figures inside Brussels fear that they're being outplayed by the British Prime Minister. This comes amid claims Mr Johnson sidestepped... Oh, that's a good use of the term. Uh, the European Commission by going directly to EU capitals for talks, a move that is reportedly paying off. Checkmate, Europe. And I, I love this this scene. But there was a great page from this with... Um, uh, uh, Tusk is just side eyeing him hard, and Boris is just sat there like a, a sort of like, <coughs> like a caricature of John Bull, but just like a friendly sort of you know benign smile, just chubby Englishman, and then the rest of them are looking kind of angry. But um, anyway, or put pensive, I think I would say. But anyway, um, the EU feels the government isn't interested in them, and that the UK is talking and shouting at itself. Actually, we're talking to other people outside of the European Union. If you can believe it, there is a world outside of the EU. Uh, they think that getting a deal with the EU comes w way back in the list of priorities, as far as Boris Johnson goes. The EU feels the whole deal-making process isn't being taken seriously. Oh, fucking really? Oh, really? The deal-making process isn't being taken seriously. Three years! For you to come out with a deal that is literally just surrender your sovereignty. Fuck you. Fuck you. You are not taking Britain seriously as a fucking competitive entity. And that's what you're looking at, actually. You're, you're f that's what Merkel's complaining about. An economic competitor is going to be set up on your shores that is going to just be able to move quicker than you and do better than you. You're fucked. Get fucked. You deserve to lose. <laughs> <coughs> Anyway, so, <laughs> and you deserve to just be outplayed by some fat Englishman <laughs> who just says, hello, folks, blah, 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 blah. that's the perfect guy to outplay you as well. It's It's got narrative perfection that the, <laughs> the elites of Europe, the, the, the uncompromising, calculating elites of Europe get this outplayed by some bumbling Englishman just going for it like a fuck, fucking rugby tackle on a child. <laughs> just get fucked. <laughs> oh, dear. Remember, the EU, you should remember, right, that no plan survives contact with the enemy. So you, you don't need to plan too hard for these things. You, you take them as they come and respond in whatever way you can, but don't, don't get too up on your ideas of empire because... You know, we we can't we can't be pushed out of Europe. We're still off the coast, whether you like it or not. But um, so they they feel they're being led up the garden path and outplayed by outplayed by Boris Johnson. Fabulous. Um. So yeah, they so they they're generally generally quite unhappy. They all look nervous. They look like they're not in control anymore, and they look like the Boris is in the driving seat. That's fucking brilliant. This is exactly the position we want to be in. This should have been day one. And if I think it was Michael Gove who stabbed Boris in the back originally and got Theresa in, um, if this had been day one, this would have ended three years ago. This would have been over. They would have capitulated. They would have just crumbled like a fucking house of cards and it would have been no problem and we were three years down the line. But no. The, and it's the Remainers who are making this happen. Get on board. There are, of course, you know, it's not going to be an instant thing. There are, There's every chance that we're going to be tied to the EU in some way until 2022. Um, 
so because there's going to be a transition period where the bureaucracy is figured out um i don't really know too much about this but i think it's probably likely from what i've read i read this article earlier um from what i've read i think it's probably likely and i think that is a compromise we're going to have to accept and i know that people in the brexit party are going to be like that's unacceptable look i think if a, tra a transition period while the bureaucracy is sorted because they aren't going to agree to something when it literally when it comes down to the fucking knuckle on october october the 30th things like okay 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 okay, okay, okay we'll, we'll do a deal we'll do you know we'll, we'll keep this going we'll keep this going we'll keep this going and you know we'll talk about these other things in a transition period or something we'll you know they'll they will agree to something you know you just, it's a game of chicken and we just have to keep our metal because even if the cars collide our car comes out better and we can carry on driving you know theirs is the one that's going to be written off so we should do this um annoyingly david cameron came out as well which was really fucking childish to be honest right boris johnson back leave to help korea well it worked didn't it <laughs> like he did become the prime minister but do you think that maybe he might have had a conviction in this regard i mean he seems to be doing the right things you know, he's saying amusing things. He's actually put, it's a real kind of Trumpian move here, um, where there's a lot of noise. But if you look at the signal, if you look at what's underneath and the actions, then what they're pinning together, Britain's doing great. The Europeans are getting scared. They're, they're genuinely worried that these there are going to be big building projects that might be in works. We're going to be rebuilding our fucking navy. Good idea for an island. A sovereign island, I should add. Um they, he's he, he's not negotiating with EU at all, and everything is everything's in our pot. The ball is in our court. You know, we're actually the ones driving now. Everything's going a lot better than it should have gone. Really, the, like from the European perspective, and so Cameron coming out and just going, oh well, you know, ad hom against Boris Johnson. He's just doing this to help his political career. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Every politician does everything they do to help their career. Just saying, there's no one who's sacrificing their career on principle here. It's just that most politicians actually go into the the fights that they believe in. But and I know that sounds sounds idealistic, doesn't it? But I honestly, I've I've met enough people in these kind of circles now to think that they they genuinely on most sides are principled in one direction. Uh, the thing that they believe in, they believe in, and it's not just. It, and I think these are genuinely deep convictions with a lot of people on both sides. <coughs> but then you've got the reality of having to work and live in the sort of political space. And that doesn't just mean politicians. That means everyone around them, you know, staffers, the media, uh, you know, and, and the, you know, legal teams, investigations, barristers, all this sort of stuff. There, there's a huge machinery of the politic what what makes up the political space and you guys are a, a you know peripheral part of it um by engaging in a live stream like this you know it's very very far away from the center obviously but like you know the, these this this huge political space that that's a massive network of people um everyone acts in the, their own best interest to improve their position in that it's an asinine thing to say you, I mean, like, what does Cameron think he's doing? He's doing this to try and improve his standing in the public eyes, because currently the Remainers are calling him the devil because he's the one who un he's the one who opened Pandora's box. So, unsurprisingly, he's trying to like worm his way back in. Um, right, I think that's probably enough stuff. I've got a clip that I'm going to end on in a minute, so I'm going to go through the super chats to make sure that there aren't any I missed. And then I'm going to play you a very, very interesting clip from Sky News Australia, which um, I think was, honestly, it was it was exactly the kind of thing that I wanted to hear. So it's totally playing into my biases, but I think I think what they're saying is true. I think it's verifiable, and I think it's it's if we're talking about moral correctness, which the left does a lot, talk about moral correctness, and the Remainers talk about a lot. Well, okay then we'll talk about moral correctness. I think that's a worthy conversation to be had. Um, but anyway, let me get to these. <laughs> like, ironically, you're all... I'm glad to try to find the... Uh, find the, the, the last place I left off on. And I'm just seeing, yep, yep, I agree with that, I agree with that, I agree with that, I agree with that. Like, okay. 
Um, have you seen Yes Minister Why the UK Is in the EU? Yeah, um, maybe I'll play it in a second actually because it's genuinely funny and I've probably already got a copyright strike on this fucking stream anyway. So I'll, I'll see. Um, uh, from American cousin who genuinely loves the British, uh, the British people, you guys need a written constitution. Ah, I went over that earlier. Um, but yeah. Um, hey, Saga, I started watching when I was 14. Jesus, that's probably too young. <laughs> now 18. I swear way too much for that. Um, do you think the Lib Dems pledging to stop Brexit will help split the Remain vote with Labour in the heartlands and thus actually help Brexit? Um, yes, actually. I mean, I'm I'm confident that they'll screw themselves because of their own vanity, uh, which is good. But the and what I was saying earlier, I don't want Nigel Farage doing the same thing to us with his own vanity. I think the noble thing would for him to, to pledge not to try and interfere, because like I say, as far as I can see, Boris is on target to get a no deal. He looks like he's on course to get a no deal. So let's... Let's you know he's got to say oh, I'm trying to get a deal because that's the sensible, reasonable thing to do. But I think tactically, he his actions indicate he's going for no deal. The Europeans are getting scared. He's getting more confident. Like he's calling us the Incredible Hulk. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm I'm down for this. You know, and into, he he could, he could start reneging all this. He could go the other way. He can you know. But don't listen to what he's saying. Watch what he's doing. And if he wasn't doing the right things, I'd be like, well, he's full of shit. But he is doing the right things. And in fact, for a Remainer here, he's full of shit because he is. But like, he's full of shit in our direction that's good for us. So let's keep this going. Um, Liberal Democrats should be renamed Walking Contradictions. Uh, someone else has got a better one in a minute, actually. And I'll get to it. Um, great content, Sargon. Long time fan. Just want to support the channel. Thanks very much, man. Um, good luck on Brexit. I really hope I can see you sometime in the US. Um, I will be back in the US in October. Um, I believe I have some university appointments. I'll have to check that with Callum. Um, but I, I will be back fairly soon, actually. Um, in foreign news, PM who is under investigation on corruption charges may very well be re-elected in Canada. <laughs> Man, I, I, Short Fat Taco will do a video on that, and that'll be well worth watching. Um, I'm sure he'll do a video on that. Cause he, he's, he's one of my main sources on Canadian politics. I don't really follow it that closely. <clears throat> but all of his videos are great on it. Um, he does really great work generally. He's criminally undersubbed. But then so so is everyone else that I hang out with. You know, one of the reasons I hang out with these people is I watch a lot of the content. It's good content. And I like and like the like this thing. I've never been like a numbers guy with the people I associate with, you know, like I, I don't care. I, I just care they they are making good content and they say sensible things. Um Heard David Starkey criticizing the elite undemocratic attempts to hold Brexit. It was damning. Oh, God, yeah, hang on, let me find... Um, I won't be able to play it, probably, because, again... Let me, uh, look it up. <laughs> that was it. That was, that was, that was how he described it, which, again, like... You know, you can't you can't change my mind on this. There's a word for what the political elite is doing: treason. David Saki talked to Brendan O'Neill about the lying, deceiving shits in the establishment, and I, I I mean, if you don't know, his name is based Starkey after BTFOing practically every feminist thought that exists. Um, he's uh, he's a wrecking ball against the hypocrisy of feminists. And uh, I've got no doubt that he's absolutely smashed this. Um, I haven't had the chance to listen to it because it only came out like yesterday. Oh, no, it's today. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, Sunday. Yeah. So, yeah, it only came out like today, the same day I started this, this stream. So I haven't had time to watch it yet. But uh, Brendan O'Neill's fantastic anyway. Like He's he's just, honestly, I, I agree with his opinions like 90% of the time. And like he's really, really good on practically everything. Um, so yeah, that's undoubtedly going to be an absolute pleasure of a conversation to listen to. Um, I just, I haven't got around to it yet. Uh, sorry, let me get back to where I was. Uh, yeah, that is the best description I've heard so far of the United States. It is British, but with hard edges. Yeah, that that's honestly how I see it. You know, it's, it's, and I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, th this is the thing, right? It's, I love the United States. I love what it is. I love that it exists. And I think that it's imperative that it continues to exist. But it's also not Britain. It's something, it's a product of Britain, but it's not Britain. And I don't want to leave Britain because I like Britain. You know, this is what I'm familiar with. This is like, I'm comfortable in, in my country, you know? Like, I don't, I, I don't know. I just know it. Um, 
you know, it's it's because I've gr- it's where I'm born and raised. Um, I'm sure that you know, with enough time, I'd become comfortable and understanding, uh, knowing of the US as well. But like, I'm it's just I'm not at the moment. So like, I've got no desire to move there. Um, not. Not that if I mean if I was going to move somewhere, it'd definitely be America. But, but I'm not going to move anywhere because I don't want to give up my country. I don't want to run away from my country. Um, but the the United States, like I I think that's I think that is a good description of that. It's, it's it's just how it seems, and I I'm not even saying there's a bad thing. It's probably probably why it's doing better than the British Empire did without actually conquering all the territory. Um, had David Starkey criticizing the oh yeah that was it. Um, Maybe not a written constitution, but some way of defining who has the power. Is it Parliament or the people? How is that enforced? And know, we know a thing or two about tyranny over here in the states. Well, that's that's the next evolutionary step of the British Constitution. Because the thing is, right? Um, re- uh, referendums. Uh, I was going to say revolutions, but they're also quite unusual over here. Um, referendums are actually n- a new idea for Britain. We've only had like three or four. Um, like and they've been, they've only been happening since the twentieth century onwards, uh, mid twentieth century even. So the these are new and generally outside of the scope of British democracy, um, and they do kind of upset the apple cart somewhat. But there's going to be an accommodation made that will become sort of constitutional norm, and at the moment the Remainers are crying the refrain, but Parliament is sovereign. Parliament is sovereign. Uh, stop right there. Parliament are the representative of the people, and the reason that we say Parliament is sovereign is because nominally, or not nominally, um, in in every other case, Parliament has been the defender of the people against the king and his aristocracy. However, the king and his aristocracy have not been the sovereign as it were, for quite some time. It's been, like, say, Parliament. But Parliament is now opposed to the will of the people, the wishes of the people, as divined through the vote, a referendum. We've never been in this position before. We don't know what happens when Parliament is the problem and is actively going against what people voted for. Two-thirds of constituencies voted to leave. Three-quarters of parliamentarians voted to remain. This is a problem. This is we. This is a, a new place in the exploration of democracy, and the philosophical argument is not that Parliament is sovereign. That was an argument of power, an argument of a pragmatic argument from power against the power of the king to prevent oppression and tyranny. Now, if the oppression and tyranny is going to come from the Parliament, then we have to reassert that principle that underlies it all, that Parliament is an expression of the sovereignty of the people. That's that's where they get their mandate from. That's where they draw their legitimacy. And if the people are in opposition to Parliament, then Parliament is not the sovereign. It is the people, and that's the point. So when this is all over, that will be the settled principle, I have no doubt. Parliaments cannot override a vote. They can't override a referendum. A referendum is a commandment to Parliament. It is a demand from the people. This is how Parliament... This is the direction that Parliament will march in. We vote you there, we tell you what to do, and you need to now go do it. The Lib Dems have got a sexy endorsement from Guy. Brexiteers are doomed. Yeah, I know, right? Like, fucking... Honestly, but the thing is, you know, you you never know. They, they, they could, they could definitely. I don't, I think they're definitely going to share a bunch of seats away from the Labour Party. Um, thanks, James. Uh, did you catch Julia Hartley Brewer's discussion with D- Jack Dromey on talk radio? No, I didn't. Labour are essentially the Lib Dems in red. Um, yeah, well, the, the Lib Dems are essentially Labour in yellow in many ways. That's the thing. That's why I'm saying they've been subverted by socialism. Like the, the liberal thing to do would be to, to make the market more free, which is what Boris Johnson's doing, because he is a, he's a bloody liberal. You know, so it's, it's not, you know, he's, he, he's not doing anything outside of the boundaries that the Liberal Democrats should be able to accept, I think, except because of their open border anti-nation state ideology. That's the, that's the only real difference there. Um, thoughts on the Bur- Burkean brand of conservative representation. Now, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I was gonna say this, but I, I thought I'd ranted on for enough. 
Um, our conscience is more, more important than the will of the unwashed masses of the Remainers. Um, well, I think that maybe he was wrong. <laughs> because the, it, it depends, and I think it, it can be qualified when it comes to big decisions like this. Because we're not just... This isn't just a policy choice. That's the thing. If... If it were that, I mean, I, I want, I, I, I think that he is generally right in the sense that you want your parliamentarians to be true to their own convictions and do the things that they're going to, they say they're going to do, even if there are people who object. You know, I mean, the will of the masses is putting them in the, the position in the first place. So even if you have, um, even if you have a politician who isn't just going to bend the knee to make you know flip flop on every issue, that's good because the way Twitter mobs work now, they simulate mass outrage. Um, but I think that in the case of actual referenda, when we have clear cut decisions, the politicians have to follow through with that. Um, I, I don't I don't think you have the right to be able to override that, and I think that the public should vote you out if you do. I would love to see the next general election. I hope, I really hope, the Brexiteer voting pro public um, just say, you know what, I don't care. We're vo voting for people who are not Remainers. That's what the, the sort of popular popularised meme that we should have, that's what it should be. Don't vote Remainers. Uh, vote vote Labour Brexiteers, vote Lim well, I'll say Liberal Democrat Brexiteers, but I don't think they exist. Um, and if they do, they must be a really, really unpopular minority in their party. Um, vote Breaks a party, vote UKIP, vote Conservative, vote anyone who was anyone who is actually going to honour the referendum. That's what we have to do. We have to make trying to usurp the referendum uh, of of a form of being a prick because it is. Um, but I'm glad you brought that up, Skelliger. And I should have I should have mentioned earlier, but I mean you you got it, so that's fine. Um, and it was a, it was, you know, I learned about this from Helen Dale, and I went and looked up the speech, and she's right, it's a fine speech. Um, but there's, this was long before we came to the event of a referendum. So, and at the end of the day, you know, politicians can do that anyway, and they, maybe they should. And if people don't like it, they can just vote them out anyway at the next election. Um, have you seen the Sam Piker apology where he justified his statement while apologizing? It was like Chank spank, watching Chank spank his nephew. Yeah, I was going to do a stream on it because it was really funny. But I mean, like, he in in Hassan's defense, right? The problem he was, he had is that the word "deserved" has moral connotations, as if it's morally correct for the jihadis to have blown up the twin towers. Um, that uh, I don't think that's what he meant, but he was stupid, and he is a communist, which means he hates America because America isn't a communist country. So he thinks that oh well, you know, essentially that means the alternative can't be that bad. But you know, English is his second language after all, guys. Give him a break. <laughs> break the Brexit deadlock, nuclear first strike now. <laughs> well, that's kind of what uh, Boris is doing. Actually, he's just he's just sidestepping because we don't need to actually deal with Europe if we don't want. Like that's a grace on our part because there's a giant world outside of Europe of which Europe is an increasingly dwindling in an inferior part of the European um, uh, you know share of GDP is down to like 15% it used to be like 70 or 80% or something you know 100 years ago but now it's down to like 15% it's like no you this is a sinking ship whether you guys like it or not, and you are busy making sure that wealth creation is restricted by increased regulation and increased um, control, centralized top-down control, that's a bad idea. That's why you're failing, okay? I, I want out of this. Um, you're dumb to not think that having a written set of rules is an improvement. We have a written set of rules. Uh, it's just, it's just, it, it's been collected over a long period of time. Americans are just principal British taken to the logical end. Yeah, you are. Yeah, You're the, yeah, that's true. Um, I hope Boris leaves the UK out without a deal, and a moment of irony follows when Remainers realise litigation won't help because they don't have autonomy of their own country when the EU is involved. That is amusing. Um, also, I forgot to mention that. So there's a conflict going on at the moment between Scottish and English judges. Uh, the the there, there was a legal challenge brought by Jim. It, it turned out that that was horseshit because this isn't a legal issue. Um, and the <clears throat> the Scottish judges. Let me let me find the way they framed it because it was really really slimy. Hmm. 
Right, so... So five days ago, Brexit, Scottish judges rule that Parliament suspension is unlawful. <clears throat> Obvious nonsense. Obvious nonsense. There's no way proroguing Parliament, an act that usually happens every single year, is unlawful. No way. The English judges just threw it out. This was stupid. This was a fucking dumb thing to say. This is a dumb thing to say driven by emotional cunts who desperate to see Britain shackled to a foreign union, right? And the reason they want this is because they view themselves as inferior to England. That's why there is this inferiority complex in Scotland. Because if you look at it, all of the arguments are exactly the same for Scottish independence to British independence. It's just they don't think of themselves as part of Britain in the same way that, say, the Welsh, Norse, and Irish, and the English do. And that's fine. If the Scots want to leave, they can leave. But stop trying to fuck things up. Like, stop acting against the interests of the country as a whole. It's not like Scotland isn't going to benefit from a booming economy or international trade. You do great. What the hell are you whining about, guys? But anyway, right? And for most Scots I know, this does not apply. You know, obviously, I know Brexiteer style Scots. So, like, no, this. Yeah, you know, and even if they're for Scottish independence, they're not like, oh, we need to fuck up Brexit. Like, oh, you know, for them, the EU is a layer of authoritarianism, effectively. And then, okay, so that's one layer peeled away. Now, for the, the Scottish independence types who want Brexit, they, okay, we want to pull, peel away the layer that is the United Kingdom. And the thing is, once they get Scottish independence, they're going to be like, okay, now we need to peel away the layer that is Holyrood because it's fucking cancer. You know, so they'll be like, you know, like Dankula will be living in the sovereign principality of his garden in South Lanarkshire or wherever he's from. Like, like whatever tiny area of bloody Scotland it is. You know, that's that's what he's aiming for. And the thing is, that's a totally respectable position that I, I hear as, as an Englishman. I'm just like, well, okay, you know. They can just have a little sovereign clan area. I don't care. That's fine. You know, <laughs> good for them. That means we don't have to worry about the next Scottish invasion. <laughs> I, you know, I'd be happy in my little principality of Swindon. Um, you know, as long as we just get left alone to trade with people, that's all I want. Anyway, so the Scottish judges said. The court session judges were unanimous in finding that Mr. Johnson was motivated by the improper purpose of stymieing Parliament. Fuck off. F it, three years. Longest ever session. It, need, it needed to be ended. The remainers are budging on nothing. The defections mean that Johnson does not have a majority. The government can do nothing. The Parliament is refusing to put through deals, refusing to put through a general election. We, what, what, what would you have done? You would have him just obey the will of the of the minority that have taken control of the uh, governmental process of the country. A minority of people, even if every single Remain voter supported what was happening right now, and I'm sure they don't. Even if every single one of them supported it, it would still be a minority. This is wrong. It should not be the case. Parliament is not representing the will of the people. It is not representing... They are not representing the constituents. I mean, there are so many hardcore Remain MPs who are in mostly Leave voting constituencies. Some at like 60 to 70% Leave. And they're just like, no, fuck Brexit, fuck Brexit, fuck Brexit. I'm like, man, that's wild. That is wild that you would be you would act this way. Um, but for the improper purpose of stymie in Parliament, get fucked. Parliament's doing nothing. It keeps refusing its own motions. It's doing nothing. Bullshit. Anyway, let me finish these super chats. I want to get I want to get to this uh, this video at the end because it's really good. Um, uh, do you know anything about the Franco-British colloquy? Colloquy? Um, no, Joe Swinson and a, a lot of the Romanian elite attended. No, I'm not. I'm not familiar with this. Let me put that in a browser so I can look that up later. Um, so, what's the sort of Boris or whomever wins from just exiting uh, whenever the general election happens, or will they put it off forever? Uh, so, the um, Jeremy Corbyn has to sign off on the general election, and he said that he wouldn't until no deal could be guaranteed to be off the table. Which obviously, no deal can't be guaranteed to be off the table, really. Um, and 
so essentially Jeremy Corbyn has found a way of backing up by going, ah, I have a reason, I have a reason, I have a reason. But even though every single day for the past three years I've been crying general election, I'm I'm not going to get one. And I actually don't want one now. You know, it's just it's this pure political convenience. That's all I'm saying. Fuck you. And it's because they know they're going to get slaughtered by the Lib Dems. Um, love Wales, love the UK, don't leave one watered down state. Yeah, totally agree. And the thing is, I think that if there's one thing that's been shown is that the the Irishness or Northern Irishness, the, the Welshness and the Scottishness of Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, and the Irishness of Ireland, really, before they left, that was, they were not taken away from these groups. Like, and I, I don't get me wrong, I realise that people can say, oh, well, hang on, they, they stopped them speaking their native languages and stuff like that. Okay, fine. But can you not be Welsh and not speak the Welsh language? I mean, I could be English, I think, and not speak the English language. I think that would be possible. I think it's uh, I think it's a set of ideas that form the the identity. Maybe speaking English is part of it, but I don't think you can say the Welsh aren't Welsh if they don't speak Welsh. Can you? Is that? I mean, like I know Welsh people who don't speak Welsh who think of themselves as Welsh. Most Scottish people don't speak Scottish, but are still virulently identify themselves as Scottish. Like very vehemently, sorry, identify themselves as Scottish. Same with the Irish. Like I don't think that's taken their identity away from them. So, anyway, just say, I think these things can still exist within the United Kingdom. I don't think these things will exist within the European Union. Like the, the proud Europeans don't identify themselves as British, do they? <laughs> hey, Sargon, I've experienced real British values and culture firsthand. I think my experience is a good insight into the value that the British bring to the world. Would love to tell you my story. Uh, yeah, I'd be interested, man. I guess um, I guess if I ever meet up with you when I'm in the US, um, I'd love to hear your opinions on it. Um the U.S. should soon have our commies back under control. Uh, please know when the moment comes with the Germans, America will have you back as always. Trump would love to do fair deals with you. Yeah, uh, Trump, is, Trump is a total Anglophile, and so, you know, like, there's no question of it. No one's worried about it. And the, the attempts, they go, oh, but he's only out for himself. He's, no, nah, shut up. No, he's not. Like, look, he, he, he's, even if he was, this is a thing he likes. So it's in his favour to do this. So it's good for us. Uh, odds on Boris delivering Brexit with the, with or without deal. Um, well, I mean, I think I think it's pretty high. It looks like it looks like he's going for it from everything that he's done. So um, I think you're too hard on Nigel. Without pressure, Conservatives would cuck, especially as the UK draws closer to a no-deal Brexit. Continues um, when the EU might suddenly offer a slightly better deal. Can you not imagine a deal with the backstop removed that still contains lesser chains? Uh, Nigel is will, what will stop that disappointment. Maybe you're right. Um, I probably am being too hard on Nigel, but at the moment, it looks like Boris is actually going for no deal, uh, or like views that as the most expected position. Um, but you're right. I mean, I don't want the Brexit Party to go away. I think that they are an important force, and I think that the fact that they're the MEPs uh, is 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 great. Actually, um, I, I like I do like it. Um, it's an interesting position because it allows the Conservatives to re retain command of what's going on. Um, I'm not saying it wouldn't be good to have like you know hard Brexiteers in charge. It would. I think we have that now. That's the thing. Um, but I think it'd be far too much political upset for that to be required. I don't think there's nearly enough time. I think given the current time we have left, uh, just 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 vote Boris. He'll be fine. Um, I think it's going to happen. But yeah, you're right. I mean, I probably am being too hard on Nigel. But if if he does end up like screwing the Conservatives over knowingly, then that will be for his vanity. You know, it's 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 all on a knife edge at the moment. I'm I'm nervous. Very nervous. They're pulling out all the stops to fuck us and so i'm very very nervous i'm optimistic but i am nervous and it could all go horribly wrong and so i'm not saying it's not going to um the u.s has a constitution and is governed by consent the second amendment shows it speak um uh, dfw soon um you still owe me an anki vesuvius oh hey man uh yeah yeah man, i'll tell you what i'll probably restart the arc server at some point just because i i i, I miss just being able to blow shit up <laughs> Shitlord Shaw, I'm coming for you, you motherfuckers. Um, also, is you, you miss the soul crushing, um, like uh, the 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 soul crushing disappointment of waking up and finding that when you've been offline, some fuck has destroyed your base. It's like, oh, you son of a bitch. But um, but anyway, if, if I start the arc server back up, which I'm entirely likely to do, um, then. 
I I guess we'll try and do big teams or something, and I'll 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 do like Discord events and stuff like this. Also, yeah, there'll there'll be a link in the in the comments to my Discord server if you want to join it. We've restored the politics rooms because when when we were when we were under attack from the um from the mainstream media as regards to our Discord server, um, it was one of those it was one of those things. Was like right, okay, we can't just have the public facing politics rooms that are outside of the long walls because that's the long walls are the the my Discord server called Athens because I'm a pretentious prick, and uh, the long walls are the the place where the barbarians, you the fellow folks who aren't yet in the server, uh, you end up. Um, and you you know you can still talk there and stuff, but it's it's a lot easier to moderate in a small number of rooms. And we had the politics rooms outside, but it, it, because there were like five or six and whatever, you know, it's too much to moderate. And because we were under such scrutiny, I mean, it, you know, we're not not safe for work. It's a public server. You know, there are like twenty thousand people in it or something. So like, you know, it's 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 not. It's not dank server. Not that there's anything wrong with being dank server, but I'm not having dank server. It's it's for discussion and you know memes and everything, but not like you know disgusting stuff or excessively edgy stuff because we're just under too much scrutiny. But it's an interesting place where you can talk about whatever you want. Obviously, you know, it's, you know, be sensible because um, you know what the environment's like, and I'm fucking lucky to still have it. You know what I mean? Um, and so what we've done, so we've got a bot there. When you join, you end up in the long walls. And if you spend 24 hours in there without getting yourself banned as in posting some shit, uh, then you can, you you get upgraded automatically and then you can see the, the other, the actual public rooms. It's just a, it's just a filter mechanism, basically. Um, but yeah, so there'll be a link in the description. Come and join me. Because I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to start doing sort of like more Discord focused stuff as well. So I'm going to, because they, they've just started the streaming thing in there. Um, so you can stream your games through your Discord server. Um, so if I can get the Arc server going, and then you can all join and you know have like your own chats and all that sort of stuff, then we can we can all we can all have some fun. If I can find the time to have some fun, oh, fuck's sake. I hate traveling so much, man. I really do. <laughs> like, it's such it's such a nightmare. Anyway, sorry. Um, uh. How do you support Boris without voting in traitorous conservative MPs that will vote against Brexit? Um, well, I think that the the next general election, if if and when it happens, which I'm sure it will, but like, you know, if and when it happens, I'm absolutely certain that Boris will put up MPs who are pro Brexit and don't rule out no no deal. He wouldn't allow people who ruled out no deal in his cabinet. I have a funny feeling that's what he'll do because that's how he's going to be able to control this. Uh, he's he's kind of got to do it. So I don't think that you'll get Conservative MPs who will vote against Brexit. I think they'll all be kind of forced to. Um, when the EU might suddenly offer a slightly better deal. Uh, oh no, I've read that. I'm sorry. Uh, are you saying it's okay to be Nazis, bigot? Uh, no, obviously I think Nazism is stupid and bad and wrong. Um, but I don't think we should persecute people if they do happen to believe that any more than necessary. Um, because persecution is wrong. You know, that's actually what being a bigot is. But obviously you were joking in your comments. So. Um, they want an empire. Oof, stay in your lane. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> like, nobody else wants Germany and France to have an empire. But there are actually people around the world right now who want a British empire. Never fucking forget that, Germany. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> in other parts of the world... Foreigners are saying, bring back Britain. All right? Don't fucking test us. <laughs> you know, that's unironically true, though. That's unironically true. People literally, when polled, they think things are often better under the British. It's amazing. I like to say, you know, Zimbabwe, let me give you the Remainer argument. You know, weren't things better when you were governed by the British? Everyone had food. You weren't ruled by dictators. It was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> hey dad should i get the god emperor memes uh basically yeah we need lord protector boris memes that's what we need um <laughs> god emperor's crusader the emperor protects uh mitch hey man how you doing the lib dems are a literal fifth column yeah they they are literally doing that right now they actually actually conspiring with foreign power <laughs> to, to undermine the the sovereignty of the country and the, the democracy of the country it's fucking amazing. I can't believe they exist. And the and not just if they were doing it for like some radical zealot fucking 
you know, if they were communists or fascists or whatever, I could at least be like, well, at least they believe in something. They have a conviction and they're following it, even if, it, you know, even if I totally disagree, at least they're not just saying, I'm doing this for my living standards. Like, fuck your living standards. Fucking, with that argument, we literally can live in golden chains, can't we? Imagine watching progressives losing their mind when the British Empire revitalizes. I know. It's, it's definitely the, the stuff, of, stuff of dreams, isn't it? Um, yeah, watch Brendan O'Neill's interview with Davy Stark and Spike. The elite is guilty of treason. You'll enjoy it a lot. Yeah, yeah, we, I, mean, I went over it earlier. Um, I wouldn't even super chat you. Liar. <laughs> From Mano Spondi. I can't fucking pronounce that. Um, Britain was much better when it was known as Britannia. Hashtag make it Roman again. Pfft, fuck off. That's basically the same as saying join the European Union. Uh, they should be named... Uh, yeah, this was the best one. They should be renamed the Illiberal Autocrats. Yes, they should. Or the, the Illiberal Bureaucrats, maybe. Um, the US and the UK and Canada should form a new alliance called the Anglo-Northern Atlantic League. Yeah, well, they don't want to leave out Australia and New Zealand if they want in it. You know, and South Africa. Um, Iranian-backed groups launched drone attack on Saudi Arabia from, pro from around proper. Brexit small potatoes come compared to the coming wars when Bretton Woods goes away. Watch Peter Zihan Sargon time is running out. Yeah, I'm quite nervous about all this. Honestly, it's, but the, the, the stuff with um the stuff with Brexit is just too immediate. You know, there's there there are long term decisions being made here and it's important that we win these battles. The I I the future direction of the country absolutely depends on this and everything will be much more difficult after it if we lose. Um where did Northern Ireland's loyalties lie? Labour, Lib Dems, or Tories Brexit? Uh, well, they, they currently have the governing parties of the DUP, and they're currently in a coalition with the Tories in favour of Brexit. So they're, they're, they're a unitary nationalist party. They're, they're, they're good. I mean, they're, they're not especially liberal from my perspective, to my taste, but, um, you know, they're, 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 in the, they're on the, the side of good at the moment. Um Trump should offer the EU a deal, trade California for the UK. Uh, he got a deal with the EU really quickly because he can't. He just put his foot down. Um, but there's no no need to trade California for the UK. We're just going to fucking leave. The EU doesn't deserve anything. But, I mean, you know, push California off into the sea, obviously. Uh, the US and the Commonwealth nations have had to go back and save Europe from Germany's bullshit twice already. Do we have to do it again, Sargon? Well, I'm, I'm saying, like... We're in the middle of doing it for you, doing it for you this time. I mean, I guess, yeah, in many ways, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come the, the the new world can come to the aid of the old once again in the form of trade deals this time. You know, we we need independence from Germany. That's what everyone needs. That's what France needs as well. But France is cooked. Um, every leave argument reminds me of the Trump border wall, avocado shortage re resulting in my avocado toast. But again, every argument they make is an argument for their fucking living standards because they're bourgeois progressives who literally believe in nothing but themselves. Like, they don't think anything's good. They just want to make sure they can get their fucking vegan alternatives. Fuck off. Boris Smash? Yeah, right. The GDP. We need to stack the pyramid. GDP, GDP, import tax units now. Man, that is a exactly the mindset from a lot of sort of um, banker types. That is exactly the mindset. They see everything as the economy. Um, Daniel Zoller, thank you very much. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the 5th of November is coming. Yes, you're not mistaken at all. What would happen if Boris pulls a resignation move on October 30th if Remainers don't let him do his job? Uh, probably the collapse of his project. So that would be a bad move, I think. Um, just drop the Maastricht Treaty. No need for Article 50. Well, he can't get anything through Parliament. <laughs> so there's no there's no doing it. Um, but right, please, please don't send any more anything because I... It's getting late. Um, the biggest failure of the Brits is not learning how to throw the damn tea into the harbour. Well, yeah, we're not going to waste tea. The cavalry, honestly, when I when I make a cup of tea, forget about it, and it come back to it, and it's cold, and I pick up. Ah, oh, what? I'm disappointed in myself, you know. Um, the Cavaliers had much nicer hats. Yeah, well, it's weird that I'll be on the side of the Cavaliers this time. Right, I can't believe it. I wish I could be as proud of my country as you, but South Africa looks like a lost cause now. Yes, I have to admit, South Africa does look like a lost cause. Um, if I lived in South Africa and I was a white person, I would leave. I, th I think South Africa is a very dangerous place, and it's becoming more dangerous 
and it's looking like something truly terrible will happen there, as if enough terrible things haven't already happened there. Um, on both sides, <laughs> not saying it's all one way or all the other, but I think the shoe is now on the other foot, and there's a, a taste for vengeance in the air, and they'll be taking vengeance against people who haven't actually done anything. So I think that they should probably just up and leave. Next time you're in the US, could you go through in Muhammad's boom boom room with David Wood? I uh, don't mean to bother with P.O. Pox and Chopper Shots. Callum! <laughs> Sorry, I just messaged him. Callum, this is your fault. South Africa is on the verge of race war because of woke socialism. Flee. Uh, that's just from the chat. Yeah, I totally agree. That's, that's the thing. I'm just looking and thinking, man, there is no way I would take the risk. I mean, I'd be, I'd be armed everywhere, man. Um, have you ever been to D.C.? It might be a swamp, but at least you don't have to worry about your kids getting eaten by alligators like in Florida. I would love for you to visit my area. Um, are you, no, I've never had a, I've never had a reason to go. Um, but, I mean, I, I'd be interested in going. Uh, Marussia Dark. On the language question, Americans don't speak American, so, well, that's true. That's exactly it. Like, the language you speak clearly is not uh, key for the identity that you hold. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll co I will co I'll contact you in that stream. Um, Boris Bank, leave to advance career. Projection much? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. Like, everyone, everyone it does, the, performs their politics to advance their careers, you know? Um, have you read about the geological electromagnetic shifts in Earth, Earth's history? Um, Every 6,500 or so years, do you think this has anything to do with current globalization push? I'm afraid I know literally nothing about this topic. Um, I can't imagine that it has anything to do with uh, global politics, though. So, I'm afraid I can't comment on it. Uh, the vast majority of Irish people speak English and can just about speak a sentence of Irish, but trust me, not a single one of us thinks we're not Irish because of it. We're patriots to the core. Absolutely. You know, there's I I I'm glad that this is something that people agree with me on because I I've been thinking about it and just thinking do do I become less English if I don't speak English, you know? And obviously I don't know because I only speak English, but like I don't think it is. I I don't think that defines your identity. I think it's your culture, the behaviours that you exhibit, the the way you do things is what we're identifying here. Um, search Malcolm X talking about white liberals. Yeah, I bet that's pretty spicy too. Um. Hi, so I'm going to email your video link earlier regarding my theory on Boris' strategy. Basically a giant poker game, which would, would appreciate your thoughts. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a watch if I can dig it out, man. Um, but yeah, it looks like he, it looks like he's bluffing, doesn't it? It looks like, uh, in regards to saying, oh, we're, we're very close to the deal. It's all going great, and, and he's probably just going to just gonna bail. Uh, Canadian, we're waiting in the Imperial call here. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> they keep talking about empires, Okay. They keep bringing it up. If they want to keep bringing up empires, then we can have a conversation about empires. We can have that conversation with the people in Hong Kong. We can have that conversation with the people in Jamaica who voted that the British Empire, 63% thought it was better under the British than independent. It's like, okay, well, we can have a conversation with them. We can have a conversation with all of these people if they want to talk about empires. I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if we just negotiated the reformation of the British Empire? We voted for it. Like, like, it's like, what are you going to say? We're evil because we voted to be in like a, a single alliance with one another. Like, what? What would be the argument against that being a good thing? <laughs> and you, first time in history, and it's done by the English-speaking world. What happened? Well, they formed a new empire by just agreeing to it. No one was oppressed in the process of it. Um, anyway, uh, Pil Sudski's. Intermarium needs to come true. British on one side, enlarged Visegrad Confederacy on the other, balanced power on both Germany and Russia. Well, essentially, yeah. That, that's essentially something like that would be nice. Um, and that's, I mean, it's kind of what's happening, to be honest. Um, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not familiar with the scenario other than how you've laid it out here. So I, I probably need more information on that. Um, have I read Rothbard's For a New Liberty? No, I haven't. Um, I'm a big fan, but I often cringe when I see you misunderstand the hardcore libertarian position. Also, rule Britannia. Well, let me uh, let me hear it. You know, post in the comments or something, uh, Thumble Gudget, and I'll I'll thumb it up so it's it's listed, and I'll I'll read through it and leave a reply. 
you know, because I read my comments. You guys know that. Um, so yeah, leave leave, uh, leave a comment. I'll find it and uh, just tell me. You know, because I've not read uh, Rothbard. Um, but I, I, you know, if I'm misunderstanding it, let me know. Uh, when's when's the next meeting? The people or demolition man vid? Thanks for the hard work. Um, the demolition man vid will be coming. I'm doing the Epstein part two video at the moment. That'll be out next week. Um, I'm happy with it. Obviously, uh, very happy with it. Um, I'm not going to spoil any of it either. Um, but it's been, it's it's been good, and you know a lot of work's gone into it. And thanks to Callum there as well for for all the help he puts in with it. Um, <coughs> but the demolition man video is one I will do. I'll try to I'll try to get it. I'll do I'll do it after the Epstein one. Um and thanks for supporting me, man. You know, and uh, if if you feel like it, you guys can support me on Subscribe Star or check the Teespring store. Well I promise there will be a Chopper Rides shirt waiting. <laughs> I absolutely promise it. Callum, make this happen. <laughs> anyway, um right. Thank you very much, everyone, for, for watching and listening and hanging out and talking and it's been very fun. Thank you for the support and super chats, and I will speak to you all later. Um, I hope this, I hope this helps brighten up your Sunday evening or Monday morning. Uh, take it easy, folks.